And for the Southeastern Louisiana Lions, they've just got to take care of business, run their offense, hit the end game. That means run around the ends and make it hard on the Colonels to defend that. And we'll see what happens as the opening kick goes out of the end zone and the Colonels will put it into play. They'll take it at their 21st down 10, 25-yard line for the Colonels to get things started. And coming out to quarterback this Nickel State football team is Toscani Figaro. We'll see a little bit of Bo Air Bear later. But this is a young man that should have been redshirted. 6'3", 210 pounds, a sophomore from Crowley High School. Hails from Lafayette, Louisiana. Works from the shotgun on first down. Will bootleg and roll and throw incomplete to Carrie Fortson. As you mentioned, Tiscani uh, is a, a good-sized quarterback. Uh, he's leading the team in, in rushing. Um, been playing very solid. As you mentioned, Coach Stubbs originally would like to have redshirted this young man, but because of the amount of injuries that they've had, uh, he's been forced into action, but he's played very well. Some impact players for the Colonels. Eric Buchanan, a speedy wide receiver with great hands. Reggie Wilson has to take over for Marcus Washington and Dalton Hilliard, two of the backs that were injured earlier this year, and Rafe plays on the offensive line. They're going to run behind that big left tackle a lot. Nowhere! On second down at the 25-yard line, the hit coming from Isaiah Carbert, and he is one of the impact players for the Southeastern Lions. He's been playing just great football. Coach Ron Roberts real high on that 6'3", 250-pound junior. Hewlin Hubert, one of the toughest linebackers you'll ever want to see at any level of football. And Tyler Stoddard, if the football's out there in the defensive secondary, you'll find Tyler Stoddard there. Third down for Nichols, and flags are down. What can you mention about the, some key players on Southeastern's defense? Uh, a lot of impact players. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, third down. That is our referee, Ross Smith. We're going back to a lot of impact players on this defense. Uh, they play very well. They're very balanced, uh, good speed and they will bring bring the wood, as they say. Toscani Figaro, a young man, as we said, that Charlie Stubbs was hoping to redshirt, but his starting quarterback, Kalen Henderson, was injured early on. Bo Hebert has been up and down. He's been dinged up a lot this season, son of Bobby Hebert. We'll talk about that later on. Here's the big third down and 16 for the Colonels. Figueroa want to keep her all the way. He's got some room past the 25, up to the 30, and they get him just short of the first down. He needs to get up to the 35-yard line for the first down. Looks like he got to about the 32. And that'll bring up a punting situation, fourth down. This is what Southeastern wants to really do is uh, take away that, uh, that run game from uh, Toscani. Uh, force him into a passing situations and, uh, you know, bend but don't break it on his first drive. Connor Frio is the punter. Averages about 39 yards a punt. Both snap. Big rush. He just gets it off. And the Colonels will get a great roll out of this. And to have the ball for the first time, or the, the Lions will... After the Colonels were forced into a punting situation and a 45-yard punt by Connor Frio. Looked like that punt came off the side of his foot. It was fortunate that he got a pretty good roll out of it. Uh, so it's not as bad as it looked like it would have been originally when it came off the side of his foot. Everybody waiting to see Brian Bennett, the 6'3", 205-pound junior transfer from the University of Oregon who can do it all. He'll hand off on first down, however. And uh, the Lions will test the middle of that Colonel defensive front. The front line, the offensive line for Southeastern is a, a very strong unit for uh, Southeastern. And so you'll see, uh, see him trying to establish something early on. They're going to up-tempo real early. Rashid Harrell in the last run. He'll get the call again. Rashid Harrell trying to make that speed sweep around the right side. He has the first down before being pushed out of bounds. Very good speed coming out the backfield, and you'll see that a lot. They'll, they'll test the corners, 
one of the things that we, uh, when we talked to Coach Charlie Stubbs, he wants the defense to actually play much uh, more physical. Offense, number five, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, second down. So holding on Chris Mallott, one of the wide receivers on the far side is going to nullify that first down and move the football back a little bit. Key players for the Southeastern Lions is the very speedy Xavier Roberson with sub 4-5 speed. Jeff Smiley, who we've seen turn it on, not only is he fast, but he's quick. And Gaston Gabriel on the offensive line, he's a big man, two-time All-SLC performer. He can block and open the holes. Reverse. Smiley around the right side. Has room. Got the penalty yardage back. Got the first down and more past the 40 up to the 43-yard line. Gain of 22. Well-conceived play there. With the, Getting back to the, the thought process earlier, Coach Charlie Stubbs really wants them to play more sound fundamentally on defense, make the open field tackle, which they did a nice job there one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, that defensive end needed to stay home to stop that reverse. Five defensive starters lost to injuries, and these are the guys that needed to get it done. Brian Cobb and Chris Berman playing very, very well, and Udo dinged up, but he's important. And there's Fruge with a catch for another first down, deep in Nichols territory, down to the 35-yard line. A 21-yard gain on the pass to Marcus Fruge. Good play fake, as you see from, from Ryan. Up tempo. Fake to Rashid Harrell. Bennett will keep himself around the end, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Southeastern moving the football very, very well on their first offensive possession. Well, that's one of the things you look at. Uh, Brian Bennett, has the, he's a dual threat, as they say. You know, he can throw the ball very well. He runs very well. Uh, he saw there was good coverage by the secondary of Nichols and just turned it upfield and took positive yardage. We talked about one of the keys to the game for the Nichols Colonels was to eliminate big plays or at least minimize, minimize. the big plays because you know Brian Bennett is going to get his. Number three, good enough to play for the University of Oregon in 18 out of the 22 games in his two years there, but suddenly they brought in a guy that would become a Heisman candidate named Marcus Mariota, and Bennett was looking to go somewhere, so... Hey, right there, Coach Ron Roberts got a phone call from somebody who knew Bennett wanted to transfer, and Southeastern started recruiting him, and suddenly the Lions pick up one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. You know, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know sometimes, and they got an opportunity to, to pick up a, a very good athlete, very good quarterback, and you can see what he's done in just a brief period. In two years, they've turned this program completely around. Well, they're measuring for the first down. And the near sideline, and he just missed it. Just inches to go for the Lions on their first offensive possession of this football game. Bennett gets the call. Boy, a talented young man. Mike Detillier, draft analyst, has him tabbed right now as a top 100 pick. And he's only a junior. He's got another year to play. Without a doubt. You know, a, a special talent. Uh, when we were talking to Coach Ron Roberts, you know, he's very, very high on, on this young man's ability. He's very poised in the pocket. He makes, he sets all of the, uh, the protections. He makes the audibles. Um, he said a lot of positive things about this young man. So, you know, he's got another year, and it, it, it'll be interesting and be fun to watch him uh, as he develops. Already passed for 2,337 yards, 2,337. What a number. Second down inches. Bennett may be looking into the end zone. Escapes. He's on the run, being chased. And cuts inside. He's got the first down inside the 25-yard line. Gain of two. Once again, we're looking at what Brian Bennett can do with his feet. He, he, doesn't force anything. He minimizes the, uh, the chance for a turnover and gets a positive yard, picks up the first down, and keeps the drive going. So far, they've covered the, the Lions have 52 yards in six plays. Look at this offense for Bennett. It's almost like a reverse wishbone. He'll keep off of it instead of pitch. Heads over his right tackle inside the 20-yard line. Excellent read by the quarterback. Uh, defensive end came down, crashed on the dive, man, and Brennan just took it around the corner. Gain of six for Brian Bennett. And notice the constant 
change of personnel on almost every play. Southeastern so deep both offensively and defensively. This time working on the center for the first time tonight. And this pass just floats away. I'm not sure if somebody tipped that or yeah, not at the line. I think it. it just slipped out of his hand. I didn't see his release. It may have been tipped at the line because it definitely just looked like a wounded duck. Now that'll bring up third down and four for Southeastern. Now they've had a long drive in progress. They'd like to get more out of this than three. Ron Roberts knows it's important to start early because despite records, this is still a rivalry. Two schools just two hours apart here in South Louisiana. Brian Bennett. Got some time, uses the screen to the right side. Rashid Harrow has extra room, and he's pushed out of bounds near the five-yard line. As the first down, it'll be first and goal for Southeastern. Excellent run there, good, good vision by, by the, uh, Rashid. As he made to turn around the corner, we were talking about it earlier, where the defense for Nichols needs to tackle much better. They've got a couple of missed tackles here, which allows him to get a, additional yards and get it inside the 10-yard uh, line. Well, I thought he had gotten it all the way down to the five, but they say he stepped out of bounds right before the first down marker. So that brought up fourth down and in inches, and Bennett tries to pick it up. Southeastern likes to dictate the tempo. They love to go fast tempo and try to catch a defense off guard, especially one where they think the opponent doesn't have the numbers to stay fresh in the game. Ball start, offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Wow, D.J. Williams took away that first down. Sneak with That's the motion, and that'll bring on to the field a very strong-legged field goal kicker who is perfect on the year. 11 for 11, Seth Sebastian, a 37-yarder. And he's a perfect 12 for 12 on the year, giving the Lions the lead in this game, three to nothing with 10 minutes and 20 seconds to play here in the first quarter. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. This is Southland Conference Football on WHNO TV 20 Sports. It's your move. You have until sundown. the Lee Corso Cornhole game to compete against the crew or your friends to win tons of awesome prizes from the Home Depot. Get tossing. Again? Every time I go down to get Bud Light, we score. I cracked the code. I should stay down there. But I don't want to stay down there. It's scary. This is three times now. This is for the win. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. No matter how long you dig or how hard you work, Wrangler Comfort never lets you down. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans are built with a U-shape. They don't cut into you like jeans with a V pattern. Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans, guaranteed. And at Strawberry Stadium, Southeastern leads three to nothing on a 37-yard field goal by Seth Sebastian. And with that field goal, he now becomes the all-time leading scorer in Southeastern Louisiana history. Long kick again by Ryan Adams. The Colonels cannot return. They'll put the ball at the 25-yard line, and they'll take it from there. A couple of key things in that first drive for Southeastern. Uh, it went 10 plays, 56 yards, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, but they had two key penalties that stalled that drive. Uh, actually caused them, cost them uh, an opportunity to get into the end zone. Had to kick that field goal. 
So one thing that they want to do is minimize those penalties. They rushed it six times for 47 yards, but a penalty cost them a first down on that sneak. To Scotty Figaro with a toss, and that is complete to Michael Henry coming out of the backfield, and he's got a first down for the Colonels. 6'2", 225-pound sophomore from Episcopal High School in Baton Rouge. Young man who didn't expect to see much action, but when Marcus Washington, your leading rusher, gets hurt, Dalton Hilliard also gets hurt. There's your two leading rushers. They're down. Suddenly, you're down to some sophomores who have not had a lot of playing experience, like Reggie Wilson and Michael Henry, and Coach Stubbs is counting on them to get the job done tonight. Henry again over the left side, and he'll push forward for a few more yards before being brought down by Masita. Well, those young running backs for Nichols um, obviously being pressed into action because of the injuries, but what they're finding is, in talking to uh, Charlie Stubbs, physically they've got a lot of uh, ability. It's just playing to their strengths, and the biggest thing that hurts them is their lack of experience, and uh, they're going to get some experience tonight. Well, Henry, two nice plays before he'll step to the sideline. Second down and five. Figaro on a keeper all the way. He's got room on the right side. Is across the 50 into southeastern territory and run out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Looked like that was a design uh, quarterback draw uh, set up. And Nichols is going to try and utilize Toscani, his, uh, his speed coming out the backfield. He's got good vision. Puts the ball in the correct hand going to the sideline. So, you know, that's one thing that the southeast is going to uh, – tried to do is, is minimize that run and, and force him into a passing situation. And, and at this point, Toscani Figaro has done quite well with running the ball. Kalen Henderson, the starter at the beginning of the year, has been hurt for most of the year. And this young man, again, was supposed to be redshirted. Right side run across the 35 down to the 30-yard line. And once again, that's Michael Henry, this youngster. When I say youngster, another sophomore getting it done. Good read off of that uh, nice block for the, by the offensive line. He just bounced it outside, taking what's given. Again, good size for that uh, young man, 6'2", 225, sophomore. Figaro, for never being ready to play this year, suddenly has found himself where he's rushed for 1,019 yards coming into tonight's game and probably another 20 or 30 up to this point. Henry, big hole on the left side. And he's got the first down, moves the chains for the Colonels inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. Good power running. Offensive line's doing a good job at this point, opening up some holes, and running backs are hitting them hard, getting positive yards. Big offensive line, and again, one of the impact players to watch is number 76 for the Colonels on the offensive line. Big Rafe plays on 6'3", 325. He's only a junior from South Lafouche High School. Henry, three rushes already for 18 yards and one catch for 13 more. First down, Figaro with the toss to the left. This is C.J. Opalobi. And he makes a run around the left side, and that's a freshman from St. Michael High School. So with the injuries that have beset this Colonel football team, you're going to hear a freshman and sophomore a lot in tonight's final game of the year. Absolutely. And on the defensive side of the ball, you saw number 51, Kulon Hubert, come over. He's one of their impact players, and he sideline to sideline made a good uh, close on that on that running play. Shut it down for no gain, bringing up second down 10 for the Colonels. First quarter, during the 6.50 minute mark to play. Figaro, good play action being chased, has to hurry and can't get the screen set up correctly. A diving attempt to save it that time by Cardis, the big tight end, Hayden Cardis, but he couldn't get to it either. That was well read by the, the Lions defense. Uh, good pressure coming off. Uh, didn't fall for the play fake. And uh, again, forced Toscani Figaro to uh, throw where he, when he wasn't ready. Drew Masita checks into the game defensively for Southeastern. Let's see if he may blitz on third down 10. Figaro with one protector. Crowd getting into it here. Here comes the blitz. He has time to set it up, and he gets that cross screen. It's complete. Henry with it inside the 15, down to the 10, down to the 9-yard line. Good execution right there, Ken. 
that had to be a mistake on the on the defense. He was wide open. Nobody accounted for him. It looks like they had man coverage, and nobody picked him up coming out of the backfield. Big 20-yard gain. And suddenly the Colonels are knocking out the door, threatening in the red zone. One of Charlie Stubbs' biggest headaches this year has been the Colonels getting into the red zone and then not finishing drives. First and goal, deep in the red zone. Figaro with a keeper all the way, being chased. He's into the end zone. Touchdown! Nifty move by Toscani Figaro. And the Colonels have taken the lead here at Strawberry Stadium in Hammond. Well-conceived drive all the way down. Good ball control, good read by Toscani Figaro. Good hard running. Uh, this, that was a well-designed drive and, and paid off for the touchdown. That is his sixth rushing touchdown on the year. And here is the point after by Andrew Dolan. He kicks it through, and the Colonels have silenced the fans a little bit here at Strawberry Stadium with a 7-3 lead over Southeastern. This is Southland Conference football on WHNO TV Sports. Toscani Figaro with the run and score. Nice cornhole board you made. Thanks. Your scoreboard is sweet, too. Football! Come on, you guys. Y'all have all day. Football. Everybody needs beauty as well as bread. Places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. The mountains are calling, and I must go. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling my challenge. Hashtag your entry, Be The Fan, on Twitter, Instagram, or Vine for your opportunity to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Now go make me proud. Millions of guys dream of being a guitar legend, but not many become one. Fewer get there without playing a guitar. I'm Justin Nordic Thunder Howard, and I'm one of a kind. Discover Card, hey, so I'm looking at my bill and my FICO credit score is on here. We give you your FICO score each month for free. Awesome sauce. Wow. The only person I know that says that is Lisa. Julie? At Discover, we treat you like you'd treat you. Get the IT card and see your FICO credit score. Johnny Figaro, the son of Cedric Figaro, who was an excellent linebacker at the University of Notre Dame. And he showed some good moves, good genes there as he takes it into the end zone. And the Colonels lead 7-3 on a 9-play, 75-yard drive. And on that drive, Figaro... Two of three passing for 33 yards, and he rushed twice for 23 more. And this deep kickoff will have the Lions try to come from behind for the first time in this ball game. Let's go downstairs to Aaron Cofill, who's got a little bit more on Toscani Figaro and that big score. Aaron? I sure do. Had someone asked Toscani Figaro back in August what kind of a season he thought he'd have, I'm not sure his answer would have been one where he becomes the first player in school history to rush and pass for 1,000 yards. He did that after completing just a four-yard pass earlier this evening. He also came into this game just 54 yards shy of the all-time single-season rushing record, which is held by Nakia Lamar. So something to keep an eye on. Pass to Kepley, hit, fumbles. Did he have it? Was it down or is it a fumble and a Nichols recovery? Fumble on the play. The ball goes out of bounds. Retain Looks like it's a good reception. Good close by the, by the cornerback. Pops the ball out. This is what Coach Stubbs was talking about where they have to create turnovers and, and finish them off. They almost did there. But that'll bring up second down, 16. Bennett. 
will hand off Xavier Roberson with speed, but nowhere to go. Did he drop it? He did. Another, another it's down again. Boy, the Colonel's trying to make those plays that Stubbs said his defense needs to do. Well, it looks like they're they're playing a much more physical game. Obviously, taking the lead, you know, countering the score by uh, Southeastern's first drive, coming back with their own touchdown. It looks like the defense is pretty well inspired, and they're stripping the ball quite well at this point. Talking to defensive coordinator Jeremy Atwell this week, he said, without the injuries, and he's five starters down and, and one that's being hobbled but, but playing some, and that's Eddie Uday. Bennett with a long spiral going for it all. Incomplete overthrows the speedy Jeff Smiley, the sophomore from Flower Mound, Texas, who had his man beat but couldn't catch up to the football. Yeah, he had a mismatch there. The linebacker was trying to cover uh, a speedy wide receiver and uh, just a little too long for him, but uh, you got to watch for those. Can you, those are opportunities that you can't squander. Byron Cobb is back. Matt McCormick to punt for the Lions. And the Colonels might get some excellent field position out of this. Whistle, they might not have gotten it out in time. False start, offense, number one, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Kim, we're seeing uh, some uncharacteristic penalties uh, for Southeastern. You know, things that you wouldn't expect from a team that's, uh, you know, a conference champion and going to trying to win it outright. The Lions definitely do not look like they're in sync right now. Southeastern third penalty for 20 yards. McCormick will back up to his two-yard line and try it again. Return is on. Spirals a nice one. Cobb will call for the fair catch and make it at the 38-yard line. A 46-yard punt by Matt McCormick. And with that, we'll take a break. Four minutes and 56 seconds to play. First quarter, Nichols surprising the lines of Southeastern 7-3. to three. And the Lions fans are wondering what's happening to our lines. We'll find out in just a moment. At Experience world-class interior comfort and convenience in the new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. Soft touch premium materials and leather seating create a luxurious ride. Relax in a quiet tuned cabin with Bose Centerpoint sound system, leather heated steering wheel and intuitive controls, including the customizable 8-inch driver information center, keep you comfortably in command. The new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. World-class luxury designed around you. We could say a lot about the most track-tested IS ever. About its stiffer suspension. Its precise steering. And its more rigid chassis. But the truth is, we don't have to. The experts have spoken. Now, it's your move. Honestly, as much as I love this job, I plan to do a lot more. I needed a new laptop for my pre-med classes, something that runs office and has a keyboard. But I wanted a tablet for me, for stuff like Twitter and Xbox, so my downtime can be more like uptime. That's why I got a Windows 2-in-1, which does both, works as a laptop and a tablet, so I can manage my crazy life and also have a life. Gotta go. Pro Football Hall of Famer Ricky Jackson, former St. Torrance Small, Brian Ellie Walsh of SportsNola.com, and host Ken Trahan break down the Saints' college and prep action at SportsNola TV each Monday at 6, right here on WHNO TV Sports. Michael Henry on the first down carry. And he pushes forward. And right now, the Colonels look as if they're playing with a bit of confidence. Actually, it looked like they've got a little bit of a swagger with them. You know, that was yeah. an outstanding drive, that last drive where they took it down and nothing fancy, just took what was there. Toscani Figaro, you know, runs the ball in, gives them the lead, and then the defense steps up and, and gets them the four downs and punt. Figaro goes under center. 
He'll roll to the right side and throw long. It is almost intercepted. Intended for Brad Nelson. Great coverage. There's Harlan Miller on the coverage. Miller almost picked off his fourth of the season. Harlan Miller, a six foot, 170 pound sophomore from Kentwood High School here. Used all of his six feet to get up there. Good replay here. Absolutely. Got some good pressure here. I mean, just kind of Figaro didn't lay it out quite like he should. He actually threw it back to the inside. You know, giving him an opportunity to almost pick that ball off. Third down for the Colonels. And six. Toss. Caught and then hit so hard. Dropped by Eric Buchanan. He was belted from behind. And that was one of the hardest hits by Theo Alexander. Again, he's one of the impact players on the Southeastern's defense. Uh, that pass should have been caught. Hit him in the hands. He had an opportunity to tuck it away. But again, good follow through with Theo Alexander putting a good solid lick on him. Alexander's been playing real good football according to Coach Ryan Roberts in the last two or three weeks. He's come on strong and that's what they've been looking for that young man to do. And he is. Connor Frio to punt. And he'll send this one deep. And we're gone. Not a good choice on giving up all that ground. Jarrell Bennett. Here's your replay. Thought for a moment he was going to call for the fair catch, and he didn't dangerous and now he's going the wrong way Gary yes absolutely that's that's something that the coaches just drive them nuts you know take the yardage that's there obviously if you can put a move on a guy and get some yards but you don't give up yardage like that well you've moved your offense back to your own six yard line then it will operate out of the gun and the lines jump ball start Offense, number 76, penalty will be half the distance to the goal, first down. That's your two-time All-SLC left tackle, Gastein Gabriel, the senior. And again, it's just part of Southeastern looking a little out of sync, and Coach Ron Roberts knows it. Uncharacteristic uh, for the Lions. You know, they played so well, especially last week. They played nearly a perfect game, and they come in here, and, and they've got a number of penalties. That's got to be at least their fourth penalty. For 23 yards? And they'll just try to give themselves a little bit of running room. Cody Sutton, the sophomore from Texarkana, on the carry. And it's not what is uncharacteristic is for Southeastern to look so out of sync. What's not uncharacteristic is for Southeastern to fall behind. They've fallen behind in so many games this year, yet rallied late in the half. And then they've owned the second half in most of their victories. They just come out with the right adjustments at halftime and really do something special. Bennett on the slant in. Complete. Marquise Hayes. And he's very close to a first down. That will be, be a little close. bit short. Well, what happens when you get your offense pushed that far back, it really limits the, the things you want to do because you have to be so conservative and not uh, turn the ball over deep in your own territory. The Lions have faced a third down conversion twice in this game and have yet to convert. Third down two. Backed up at their own 14, would like to keep the chains moving, trailing the Colonels of Nichols, a defense that has been rattled and have lost five starters to injuries this season. And here's the run around the left side, stepping out of bounds, Devontae Scott. He's got the first down. Thrilled the crowd as he kept going, but he did step out of bounds and they'll bring it back. He does have the first down. The chains do move for the Lions. An 11-yard gain. That was close. Uh, again, Nichols needs to close and, and corner the, the running backs on that sideline. Can't let him have an opportunity to split them like they just did. Fortunately, he stepped out of bounds. The very speedy Frugé up at the top of your screen. Bennett from under center will hand off Smiley coming around the near side and he's got big yardage check that 
That's Marquise Hayes for 16 yards and another first down. And now the Lions offense starting to look like it's finding its rhythm in this game. And you're talking about Marquise Hayes. He's got 4-4 four, four speed. So once he turns that corner, he's a definite threat to take it all away. Bennett working under center now on this drive. Quick give to the first person through. And that's Cody Sutton over the right side for a few. Jordan Hanberry and others made the stop. During the end of the first quarter, and if most people would have said the Lions might be trailing the Colonels at the end of one, would you have believed it? The Colonels believed it, and that's Absolutely. what's important. They're showing they're here to play. The Lions trying to respond. Bennett. Some play action. He wants to go long. He's got Jeff Smiley there. Smiley on the turnaround. Does he pull it in? Does he make the catch? If it is, it's an NFL-style catch right there. No Smiley bitch. with a big-time catch on the bomb from Bennett. 46 yards. Nice play. He split the seam. He split the cornerback into safety. Brian Bennett laid it out very nicely, allowed the receiver to run underneath it. Smiley, one of those sub four or five speedsters on this team, and he loves that go route. Bennett now on first down goal. Lots of time. Throws a rocket into the end zone. Caught by Tony McRae. Touchdown. Good, cover, uh, good read by the quarterback. Wide receiver just... Basically, looked like he used a basketball position, got in front of the defensive back, turned around, and was just put on his numbers. Excellent, excellent throw. Well, McCray, a 5'10", 175-pound senior. That's his sixth touchdown on the season. And it didn't take Brian Bennett and the Lions long once they found their rhythm to get some points on the board and retake the lead in this game. And you've got to remember where this drive started. It was back inside the five-yard line after that punt return. That's yeah, about a 96-yard drive, eight plays. And Seth Sebastian, who has only missed one extra point all year that was blocked, kicks his first of this game. He is now converted on 55 of 56 extra points, and the Lions have retaken the lead with 50 seconds to play in the first quarter, 10 to 7 on a super catch by Tony McRae. Brian Bennett just hit him with the bullet. McRae from Irwinton, Georgia, Wilkinson County High School. Looks like the uh, the Lions got a wake-up call somewhere along that that possession. As we talked about, they were backed up inside the five-yard line, had a eight-play, 94-yard drive, took three minutes and two seconds off the clock, and looked like they came to play on that drive. I'm sure there was a little chit-chatting on the sideline <laughs> from the coaches that said, Let's get this thing going. Charlie Stuff said, too, he says, look, a lot of people think because we're coming in here with a 4-7 and seven record and we've suffered so many injuries throughout this season that, hey, maybe we're just going to show up. But we're, we're going to do more than go through the motions here. Ryan Adams gets set to kick it off. This will be his 80th kickoff of the year. And this one will be returned. Harry Fortson with a return near the 20-yard line. A flag is down. Back at about the 15-yard line. Bennett on that last drive. Illegal block in the back. Number 18 of the receiving team. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Yep, you see number 18 right there, definitely blocking the back. Yeah. 
you want to be a little bit more subtle than that uh, when you're making those blocks. When you're out in the open, that really cost you, as we saw earlier in the drive. Perhaps Nichols, now that they're being backed up, might be able to put their long drive together like Southeastern did on the previous drive. Charlie Stubbs realizes one of the keys to the Colonels staying in this game as injury-plagued as they have been, injury-ridden as they have been this season, is to get some long, sustained drive and shorten that clock so that he can stay in, in uh, with his team all the way to the fourth quarter where they've got a chance. Figaro, this is a keeper all the way, and he's out to the six-yard line. Masita. With the stop, number 20 right there, tough little linebacker. 6'1", 235, the junior from Oak Forest Academy in a meet, Louisiana. Masita looked like he was almost in a spy position on that. Uh, King on uh, Figaro, uh, definitely he wants to run first, first and foremost at this point. So it looks like he's going to spy him a little bit. Wouldn't surprise us, Ron Roberts, coach of Southeastern, knew that to stop Nichols, you've got to stop Figaro because with his feet, he can make so much happen. Better runner than he is a passer. At least that's what they say. But i got to tell you, I've been pretty impressed with his arm tonight. Well, when talking to uh, Coach Stubbs, one of the things that uh, that he talked about with uh, Figaro was the fact that he has a strong arm, but he has a tendency to float it in games. That's the end of quarter number one. The Lions take the lead at the end of the first quarter, 10 to 7 over the Colonels. We'll be back with quarter number two right after this from Strawberry Stadium in Hammond, Louisiana. Nichols and the nationally ranked Southeastern Lions back in a moment. Banning from the internet is. That's it's like the worst that's thing you can unspeakable. Have. I will run away. Oh, just bolt from. Bye bye. What is there left in the world? Like, how would. Oh my God, I'd have to go to the library. We have a library? Yeah, 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 we do. I, I passed it once. Michael, what would you do without the internet? I would probably have to do my homework. <gasps> without the internet, that would be so hard. But how do you look up answers? I don't, like, I don't even know. Dr. Meyer didn't think he could afford to advertise his growing chiropractic clinic until Bright House Media Strategies told him how he could advertise on Bay News 9 all day and not spend an arm and a leg. All Bright House Media Strategies, smart solutions for advertisers. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. On WHNO Sports is presented by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center, committed to providing the best in quality, comprehensive services when it comes to patient care. Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. We thank them for their support of Southland Conference football. Okay, just a recap of what we've seen from the first quarter. Nichols has four first downs. Southeastern has six. Nichols has rushed the ball ten times for 57 yards and one TD. Southeastern is 11 rushes for 82 yards. On passing, Nichols 2 of 6, 33 yards. Southeastern 6 of 8 for 82 and one touchdown. And that's a keeper by the quarterback, Toscani Figaro, all the way. Got good positive yardage up to the 12-yard line. It's kind of impressive at this point here. Both teams are very close as far as number of plays. Nichols had 16 plays for 90 yards, and... Southeastern had 19 plays, but they have 164 yards. Biggest difference here is uh, the penalties. Four for 23 against Southeastern, two for 12 against Nichols. Well, when you're down a little bit, but having a good game, you've got to move the chains in a situation like this to keep the momentum in your favor. Third down five. Colonels deep in their territory. Figaro under a big rush. Flags are thrown. Whistles blown. Timeout. Nope, no Nichols. flag thrown. Colonel just this called timeout. This is their first charge team timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. That came from the sideline. 
as Figaro was ready to go, but evidently Charlie Stubbs and company saw something that they didn't feel that play was going to work. I so. like what he saw there. You know, we talked about Charlie Stubbs earlier, and he wanted to slow the pace down and, and keep Southeastern from beginning the ball. Nichols' time of possession is a little bit greater, but obviously when you score as quickly as the Southeastern has on that, that last drive where they had the long pass down the seam, um, not what, the, what you're looking to do as far as time of possession. Wednesdays on WHNO, it's the Prep Recruiting Insider, our series focusing on the world of high school recruiting. Join Ro Brown and Renee Nato, our recruiting guru, as they take an in-depth look at the best prospects in our area, past and present, on location from the NOLA Motorsports Park in Avondale. It's the Prep Recruiting Insider, PRI, Wednesdays at 6, here on WHNO TV Sports. Back and looking again at those first quarter stats. You look at rushing yards. Nichols answered the 82 by Southeastern with 57 of their own. Southeastern with 82 yards passing to only 33 for the Colonels. And there's the flags that follow the whistle here. False start, offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, third down. And those are the kind of penalties that really get you. You come off of a timeout and you go Im immediately into a false start. Well, it's the kind of penalty that will make a coach lose his hair, but Charlie doesn't have a whole <laughs> lot left down there. So, but they called the timeout because they saw something where they didn't think the play was going to work, so they come back with the set play and they moved again. Yes, they did. First time it was Abbasi Salamu. I think it's... Ball start, offense, number 79. Penalty half the distance to the goal, third down. This time it's the right side of the line. Big Eric Alt, the 6'6", 315-pound senior. That appears that Nichols is getting out of sync. Because Charlie Stubbs is obviously not very happy about what he's seeing right now. Two back-to-back -back penalties. Now Figaro... Two yards deep in his own end zone. Here comes the pressure. Screen right. Henry's got it. Henry with the first down and a little bit more out to the 20-yard line. So they let the pressure come, set up the screen, and move the chains. That was very similar to the, the previous uh, drive where they had a, a long run and picked up the, uh, the first down. Nice execution there. Once again, whoever's supposed to be picking up the back coming out of the backfield either missed the assignment or it was well-conceived and obviously paid off with the first down. 16-yard gain, Figaro to Henry, and the Colonels have a new set of downs to work with. And here's a give, nothing fancy. They'll just try the middle of that line. Michael Henry gets a few for the Colonels before he's gang-tackled. Colonels patient. You won't see them in a hurry-up up-tempo type game. Completely opposite of what you'll see out of Southeastern. We've seen them go into the no huddle offense. You're going to see Nichols huddle up. Trying again, as we talked about, get the tempo of the game down, time of possession in their favor, minimize the touches by Southeastern. Figaro going long down the right sideline, but he overthrows everybody intended for Eric Buchanan, who was well covered. But Figaro just unleashed that one. That's yeah. one of the things Charlie Stubbs said that he most wants to work with Toscani Fuggero on is, is his release, his passing, his timing as a passer. He's got the running part of it down, but if he had the experience as a thrower that Bobby, uh, that brother Bowie. Bowie Bear, Bobby's son, has on, on the sidelines, he'd be a pretty complete quarterback for the Colonels and probably will be considering that, remember, Fuggero's only a sophomore. Colonels will take another time out here. So with that, the Lions leading 10 to 7, 13 10 to go in the first half. Crowd waiting to see what their line defense will do. And Nichols has brought some people from Thibodeau with them too. Line up, the line fans say. Back in a moment. It's your move. 
You have until sundown. Hey, you think we've amassed enough meat here? You're right. I'm gonna get some more. more. Again? Every time I go down to get Bud Light, we score. I cracked the code. I should stay down there. But I don't want to stay down there. Scary. But this is three times now. This is for the win. Bud Light for the fans who do whatever it takes. AT&T presents Be the Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling my challenge. Hashtag your entry Be the Fan on Twitter, Instagram, or Vine for your opportunity to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Now go make me proud. Southmore. The sophomore running back for the Colonels, Michael Henry, who has kept this drive alive with that big first down, has 25 yards on five carries and three receptions for 49 yards. Every reception completed by Figaro in this game has gone to Henry. Figaro in trouble, and he's dropped back at the 20-yard line. The Ad Colonels will have to punt. Adequate protection there early on, but as the pocket started to collapse, uh, they're very cognizant of the fact how good a runner Figaro is, and the, the, the Lions defense stayed intact and stayed, stayed in their lanes. Yeah, they'll spy Figaro. They'll bring pressure from the outside, but even doing that, it's important for the inside defenders to keep their lanes. Return is on as Friu gets a great roll that's going inside the 25-yard line. All the way down to the 23-yard line to back the lines up. So for Connor Freyu, a punt of 58 yards. So he's had two over 50 to get the Colonels out of some problems. They're not pretty. They're not pretty, but it's pretty effective, the end result that he's getting. Southland Conference football on WHO continues Saturday at 3 as Sam Houston meets Central Arkansas. Your home for Southland football in New Orleans is WHO TV 20 Sports. Bennett on the keeper. Around the right side. Puts a move on a defender and takes it out to the 35 yard line. This goes back to what uh, Coach Ron Roberts was talking about. He's a dual threat. He can hit you with the pass. He can beat you with his legs. Again, very smart. Takes what's there. Gets positive yards. and keeps the sticks moving. That's what makes it so hard to defend him. Four rushes, 29 yards for Brian Bennett in this game. Good play action. Look at the keep, the fake, the move. He'll move the chains again. Across the 50 and the Nichols territory at the 49-yard line. Well, he read that defensive end. He seemed to be flat-footed, and he, he opted to keep the ball, picked up very good positive yards. And once again, we're seeing a no-huddle offense. The pace of the game is, is what Nick, uh, what Southeastern likes to do is pick it up and, and exhaust and fatigue a defense. 16 yards on the gain. The faster they can play with the depth the Lions have, the harder they can make it on a defense, and that's what they're trying to do right here. Bennett on the keeper, nowhere to go, and... He's just finally run out of bounds by Ronnie Walker and Cameron Brown. We saw that was a good defensive stand there. Everybody stayed in their lanes, kept uh, the outside from uh, being turned. They have to do that on a regular basis if they're going to try and contain Bennett any. Defending Brian Bennett is very much like defending Figaro. <laughs> You've just got to play assignment football defensively. Bennett's so good, though, at making the checks, making the adjustments, even for the offensive line. 
all by himself back there. And he'll run. Design run all the way. He's got the first down. Breaking tackles inside the 35. The the Fumble. Ground. Scramble. Who's got it? Colonels. Nichols on the fumble recovery after a fine run by Brian Bennett where he broke some tackles and went 16 yards but lost it coming down. And Nichols' defense that set a goal for making turnovers and making things happen that hasn't happened most of the year. They wanted to do that in this final game, and so far it's happened. We've seen it on a number of occasions. This, I think that's the third time the ball's been put on the ground by Southeastern, and this is the first time Nichols has been able to capitalize and get the turnover. But as again, Charlie Stubbs wanted to play more physical and seems to be doing that. Colonels at their own 33, first down. Descani Figaro. He's got a design to run all the way up to the 38-yard line. Gain of five. Yeah, that last play definitely was a design run. Short, short step back and then just take it up the middle, get what you can. Picked up about five yards on it, so it was keep doing that. You move the sticks pretty quick. Figaro's rushed for 48 yards on eight carries. He may just decide to put this game on his shoulders. He's in trouble with some pressure, throws late and caught. And a fine catch by Kerry Fortson to move the chains for the first down up to the 49-yard line. Good patience by Figaro on that play. Watch the, uh, the receiver broke open late, knew he was going to take a shot, placed it where the receiver got it, and picked up the first down. An 11-yard gain. As we said, Colonel's playing... The game they want to play, a long, slow, clock-eating, sustained offense under center. Here's the handoff, trying to keep the chains moving on first down. Won't get much, about two yards. Up the middle by Michael Henry, the sophomore. Good hard run by Michael Henry there, but also a good hard stop by number 51, Keelan Hubert. Again, that's one of the, the key players on that defensive uh, defensive team for Southeastern. Henry is very slow to get up. And again, Nichols already minus Marcus Washington and Dalton Hilliard Jr., their top two running backs. Henry's rushed 26, or rather six times for 26 yards in this game. Being asked to shoulder a lot of the rushing load. Figaro again, design run. He'll move the chains first down across the 40, down to the 38-yard line. 13-yard gain by Toscani Figaro, the young man from Lafayette, Louisiana, and Crowley High School. Well, if you notice what they did, Ken, there, they, they emptied out the backfield. They had trips down to the, the left side of the formation. He took the back, put him in motion out on the right-hand side. And again, it was a designed run. Well conceived, and he picked up um, some additional yards. Stick three wide outs left and two out there to the right, and you've got six on six football in the middle, and you've got somebody like Toscani Figaro who can move well. That's dangerous. Now nine carries, 61 yards for Figaro, and he just keeps piling up yardage. Nice roll to the right. Wide open Buchanan with the catch, and he's got a first down at the 25-yard line. Another good-looking drive that Nichols is putting together here, picking their, their opportunities, isolating, getting some, uh, some receivers in wide-open positions, and Figueroa's putting it where he has to. The Colonels have had a season where when the offense has scored a lot of points, their defense has given up more. When the defense has held opponents like Central Arkansas to 17 points last week, the offense could only manage 10. It's been that kind of a year for Charlie Stubbs and his group. Figaro, nice play action, nice keep, and look at Figaro all the way inside the 15-yard line down to the 13-yard line. Again, a very similar formation. This time he kept the back in, uh, read the dive off of him, and kept the ball himself, turned it upfield, hit a seam. Good play action to Reggie Wilson, another sophomore from Franklinton High School. You notice how many underclassmen that you're, you're calling their, their names and sophomores and freshmen. 
First down 10. The Colonels can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Here's Reggie Wilson. Big hole on the right side. and He's inside the 10-yard line. Reggie Wilson on the carry. Stop made by number 20. Number 20, Drew Masita made the stop for Southeastern, but Southeastern's just... They don't have the swagger you said that Nichols had a little bit earlier. You know, you thought they would have picked it up when uh, Southeastern made that long drive, picked up, you know, took the lead, but Nichols has come right back. This has been a seven-play, 59-yard drive by Nichols. This time, Figaro under center. And don't know if they got, did they call a timeout again, or did they just not get the snap off in time? Let's listen. Timeout. Nichols, that is their third and final charge team timeout. This is also a media timeout. So timeout on the field as the Colonels use their final timeout of the first half. 7.27 to play, first half. 10-7, lines with the lead, Nichols threatening. We'll see if they can finish the deal when we come back to Strawberry Stadium on Southland Conference Football on WHO tv Everybody needs beauty as well as bread. Places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. The mountains are calling, and I must go. Experience world-class interior comfort and convenience in the new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. Soft-touch premium materials and leather seating create a luxurious ride. Relax in a quiet tuned cabin with Bose CenterPoint sound system, leather heated steering wheel and intuitive controls, including the customizable 8-inch driver information center, keep you comfortably in command. The new 2014 Buick LaCrosse, world-class luxury designed around you. Eeny, meeny, miny, go. More adventures await in the new seven-passenger Lexus GX. Dare to be spontaneous. Louisiana Lift for their support of this telecast, specializing in customer service on equipment, rental parts, and training. Louisiana Lift has been serving its customers. Here's Figaro on the run. He's got room. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Tuscany Figaro. Figaro on that drive up until the touchdown ran, hit three rushes for 29 yards. He just picked up an additional eight yards on that. He was also two for two on passing for 24 yards. As you mentioned, Ken, he's put this, this game on his shoulders up to this point. Toscani Figaro has truly done just that, Gary. He has decided to take this Nichols team and this injury-riddled season on his shoulder and make it happen. Point after good, and the Colonels have retaken the lead from the Lions 14-10. to 10. Disney side. Ba, 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 and the best place to show it is Disney Parks. So come to the place where the entire family can laugh, let loose, and play together. Disney Parks. Come on, show your Disney side. It was the lady named Judy who walked out the door with a wicked Christmas list that fell down to the floor. A Microsoft Surface tablet. With Office 2. A 2-in-1 Sony Vio Tap 11 PC. For Lou. A powerful LG G2 smartphone. That's some hot tech talk. Now her nieces and nephews have holiday treasure. They'll be like, yeah, Aunt Jids, you're like the best auntie ever. Great gifts like the LG G2 in your ultimate holiday showroom. Best Buy.
with a 14-10 surprise over Southeastern here at Strawberry Stadium. They have come in here with a 4-7 and seven record and said, we've come to play Charlie Stubbs. Maybe his best motivational locker room talk as the dangerous Xavier Roberson is deep. He can't grab that one. And the Lions will have to take it at their own 25-yard line. Well, Brian Bennett and company have seen this happen to them before. A slow start in the first half. And these Lions have always been able to rally in the second half of play. Bennett, 6'3", 205, the junior transfer from the University of Oregon, where he lost that quarterbacking job after playing in 18 games to Marcus Mariota, but found a home here at Southeastern and has led the Lions to a 9-2 and two record, undefeated 6-0 and oh in the Southland Conference. Run on first down to the left side. We'll get a few, but not many. Nice defensive play by no, number 95 on the Nichols defensive line. Held that for a very limited game. Bennett will back up in the shotgun. We see Byron Johnson check in. Roberson will go in motion to the top of your screen. Bennett looking his way now instead going over the middle and he hits Fruge with a long pass into Nichols territory at the 44-yard line. That was a bullet by Brian Bennett for 30 yards to Marcus Fruge. Strong arm. Watch this replay here. We're seeing comes inside the seam between the safety and the corner. Good close by the safety on that. First down lines. They'll keep it on the ground here. Xavier Robeson on the carry. We have not seen him bust out and show the speed, the blazing speed that he has. Bennett's been running so much in his place tonight. Bennett throwing 7 of 9 for 112 yards and a touchdown. Going under the six-minute mark in this first half. Bennett looking left and a diving attempt by McCray. He's got it. Bennett shows good arm strength. That's a long pass to throw because he was on the, the near side hash mark and made the play all the way across the side. Good, good velocity on that ball. 13 yard gain. Tony McCray. Here's a little bit of up tempo by the Lions. Roberson right up the middle. And he's down to the 25-yard line. Gang tackled there by a whole bunch. And you mentioned it, that up-tempo. You see a lot of no-huddle offense from Southeastern here. It does a couple of things. It, it minimizes the defense's ability to bring in any uh, any substitutions, but also causes them uh, doesn't allow them to catch their breath. Here's a version of the wishbone out of a shotgun formation. Fake to Roberson, pitch to Harrell around the left side, knocked out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Yeah, that formation is a throwback to the old wishbone with a shotgun look to it, and it's a triple threat there. You can give it to the dive man, you can do the pitch, or you can, the quarterback can keep it himself. Picked up a lot of positive yards there. Good, good job by number 13 on defense to minimize that, uh, that run. Brian Lewis knocked him out. First and 10 of the 15 for the Lions. Bennett working out of the gun on the fake to Sutton and throws behind Tony McRae, the intended receiver. One of the few passes that we've actually seen that was not on target. McRae upset with himself. Maybe he ran the wrong route. Wrong route, rather. It happens from time to time. Usually the quarterback will point to the wide receiver. The wide receiver will point to the quarterback. You know who's going to win that battle. <laughs> Eight of 11 for 125 yards passing for Bennett. Colonel's not bringing a lot of pressure. 
Rushing four, Bennett on the keeper has room inside the 10 yard line. Brought down by B.T. Sanders. Well, this is what you want to see from Southeastern. You want them to respond to that scoring drive that Nichols just put on the board to take the lead back. They put together a pretty sound, uh, pretty sound drive here, sparked by that long pass early in the, in the drive. Ninth play of the drive. Bennett with three wideouts to the top of your screen. Here's the slant in. Smiley almost, but the ball's batted away by Ryan Menard. I think Menard got a hand in there. Also had pressure from number 51. He took Bennett down after the ball. So I don't know if he hit him right as he released it, but that ball was a little bit behind the wide receiver. That's Chris Lorden who was putting the pressure on quarterback Brian Bennett. And that brings up a fourth down five. And Nichols has found a way if this isn't a fake to put the pressure on Seth Sebastian, who kicks a 27-yard field goal and continues to be perfect on the year now, hitting 13 of 13 field goal attempts and bringing the lines within one point of the Nichols Colonels, 14-13 here at Strawberry Stadium. And we were telling you a little earlier about Louisiana Lift. WHNO Sports thanks Louisiana Lift for their support of this telecast, specializing in customer service on equipment, rental, parts, and training. Louisiana Lift has been serving its customers since 1980. Check them out online at LALift.com or call their New Orleans area office at 504-463-3400. That's Upton, way up there in the lift with the high camera angles made possible by Louisiana lift. Upton's got the wave going all by himself on top <laughs> of the lift. I just saw that. Yeah, Southeastern in their black uniforms with the gold headgear, and they don't wear these real often. Aaron Cofill's got something on that in just a little while for us. Well, Coach Charlie Stubbs has to be very pleased with the the response that his team has, has put to Southeastern's offensive attacks. The defense have been to, but don't break. The offense moving the ball extremely well. That's a 10 play, 65 yard drive. Took three minutes and 28 seconds and ends with a Seth Sebastian 27 yard field goal. Adams with the kick. And the return by Carey Fortson. Not much, but the Colonels still have the lead and the football with three minutes and 49 seconds to play in the half. Good coverage on that. Minimize that, that kickoff return. Well, you've got to credit Toscani Figaro. Young man who's the son of Cedric Figaro. Outstanding linebacker at Notre Dame. The first freshman at Notre Dame to ever start defensively on the defense. Played for Lou Holtz there and had an outstanding career making All-America. Here goes Michael Henry with a big hurdle and big yardage past the 40 up to the 46 yard line and the Colonels have found something that they can exploit in the southeastern defense. A 28-yard gain by Michael Henry from Baton Rouge Episcopal High. What I liked about that, once he got past the line of scrimmage, he started looking for defensive backs. That's what the bigger running backs have a tendency to do is I'm going to pick on somebody smaller. Henry, 54 yards rushing on seven carries in this game as a sophomore, having to play for the injured starters. Figaro's got an open man, and he can't catch up to the football. Darrell Watson had to turn around for that one. Figaro threw it a little bit behind him, or Watson outran the, the play. I think Figaro picked him up late coming out, break, breaking free behind the secondary. Uh, just didn't have a chance to get his feet set and didn't, didn't put the ball exactly where he wanted, but still a catchable ball. Hit him in the hands. I think he should have had that one. Darrell Watson, the 5'10", 170-pound sophomore out of Holy Cross High School, New Orleans. 
Second down, 10 for the Colonels. Figaro fakes the screen, in trouble back there, nowhere to go, and he's dropped for a loss of two, maybe three. Again, can that look like they, that it might have been a designed run play, fake that, that screen to the left-hand side? Well, besides Michael Henry, Figaro doing his part, rushing 11 times for 72 yards. Yeah, as we saw here, we had, again, it looked like we're doing a spy on, on Figaro uh, by the Southeastern defense. They're going to try and keep him inside that pocket, minimize those runs. The crowd will get behind the Lions defense on third down 13 at the Colonel 48. Here comes pressure. Figaro in trouble. Screen set to the right side. Michael Henry can't catch up to the football. Incomplete. A good pressure by Kulin Hubert on Figaro. Try to hit... Uh, Number 40 out there, just a little bit too far out of his reach, but he had good coverage. Uh, linebacker was running with him step for step. That'll send Bennett deep. Gerald Bennett, the young man from Carr High School. And Connor Friu, who's had some long punts. And this game for the Colonels gets another one with good hang time, good distance, fair catch called for and made. So Jarrell Bennett with the fair catch. And let's go downstairs to Aaron Cofill for more on the Southeastern uniforms. Well, guys, this is just the second time this season they've worn this black uniform with the white numbers. And the equipment staff, they may have been holding their breath a little bit because last time they wore them in their game against Incarnate Ward, by the end of the first half, the numbers were all falling off. And they actually had to change and wear a different jersey for the second half. So I've been keeping an eye on it, and it looks like these ones are holding up just fine. They might be considered unlucky right now <laughs> in the first half, though. We'll see how the Lions react toward the end of this half and in the second half with that intended for Tony McRae. And he took a shot on a pass he couldn't catch up to. He took a shot and also Bennett took a shot after he released the ball. And another um, uncharacteristic, he was a little bit off, uh, off of his mark. Ryan Lewis was covering McRae on that one, the senior. Also out of Edna Carr High School. Bennett on second down under heavy pressure, trying to set up the screen. Harrell breaks the tackle. He's going to come to the near side. He's got to outrun a lot of white jerseys and can only get back to the 10-yard line. That's what you want to see on defense. You know, good pursuit, good lateral pursuit. That way you, you don't give him a, a crease to cut back into. Byron well Cobb played. made the tackle, and he's one of the players that Charlie Stubbs has been real high on lately for this Colonel defense. Again, well read. Uh, Harry Trench could not get him at first. Southeastern one of four on third down conversions. Bennett dropping back near his goal line. He's got lots of room to run. Cut to the outside. And he's up to the 26-yard line, moving the chains for a first down. Brian Bennett, much like Figaro, is saying, I'll take this team on my shoulders for the rest of this half, if I have to, and maybe for the rest of the game. That's what he's looking at doing. He, good coverage downfield, apparently. He could not find anybody to, to release the ball to and took that, uh, that crease right up the middle, eluded a, a couple of tacklers. 15-yard gain. And, boy, up-tempo now as Marcus Fruget on the move, move the chains again. Hurry up offense because we are down to 56 seconds to play. Under a minute to go in the half. That 12-yard gain, Bennett's going to pick up the pace. Here comes pressure from the outside. The toss in. Is it caught? Incomplete. Incomplete. That was McCray with a great attempt. Covered very well by Brian Lewis for the Colonels. That was a good read by Brian Lewis. He broke very well on the ball. If that ball is not thrown exactly where it is, he has an opportunity to take that ball, uh, get the turnover, and maybe take it back for six. Brian Bennett and this Southeastern team a little surprised right now that the Colonels 
are leading by one. Giving the Lions all they can handle. Been at 10 of 16, 136 yards. And the score snapped low, gets away, and Bennett's got to just jump on it and save it at the 39-second mark. Fortunately, that ball stayed right at his feet and wouldn't have, have to chase it, chase it down because he had nobody back in the backfield. If you notice that, uh, they cleared out the backfield, spread it out, and uh, he was all by himself. So fortunately, it stayed close to his feet for, the, for him to make the recovery. Lost eight yards on the play. The last time a Nickel State Colonel came to Strawberry Stadium and surprised Southeastern was in the final game of Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas was leaving, and the team rallied around him, came in, was a heavy underdog in that game, and surprised Southeastern and, and won. Ron Roberts warned his team all week that if they don't play the best football they can play, this is a dangerous opponent because it's your cross-state rival. They're two hours down the road in Thibodeau. And this is their bowl game. This is their playoff game for Nichols. Absolutely. And it's just like any, any rivalry. You can throw the records out the window. Uh, you could be way up, way down. But you know, when it comes to play your rival, you're going to give it your best shot. And as we're seeing right now through the, this uh, almost the conclusion of the first half, we've got a very, very competitive game from the Colonels. Charlie Stubbs told his football team, had it not been for injuries, we very well could be battling for the conference lead tonight. But injuries have really hurt us, and we've got a lot of young kids playing. Let's show everybody that we are a good football team. And I don't know if you got a hand on that and batted it down, but Definitely did. great rush that time by Chris Lorden. Lorden from John Curtis, the red shirt freshman, 6'2", 245. And again, you're hearing freshman, red shirt freshman, sophomore for Nichols because they have been so riddled by injuries. Five starters on defense, gone. And Eddie Udo, not playing at full speed, when he can play, when he can get in there. So with 35 seconds to go, suddenly Southeastern finds himself punting the ball away. Matt McCormick sending it deep, and I think the Colonels will just let this one be touched dead at the 39. They might be happy to take a 14-13 lead into the halftime locker room with 23 seconds to play after a 31-yard punt by McCormick. Well, Ken, we were talking about all of the injuries they had. We were talking to Jeremy Atwell, defensive coordinator for Nichols earlier before the game, and he was telling us that they had 31 defensive players when they started the season. They're down to 17 players that have dressed out and made the trip. So it tells you what kind of injury season they've had. And you turn around and look at the other side of the football, offensively and defensively, you've got not only two deep, but up to 30 players that will play on each side of the ball for Southeastern in this game. Figaro and the Colonels opting probably just to run the clock out. Let's see if they just let it. Well, Nichols doesn't have any timeouts left. I don't think Southeastern would choose to stop it. We're down to the final five seconds of the first half. And uh, both teams let the clock run out. So at halftime, the Colonels have surprised Southeastern here in Hammond and lead 14-13. And probably a lot of people in Lake Charles, Louisiana, that are wearing a McNeese sweatshirt tonight are pretty excited about what's happening in the first half of this game. Here it's at Strawberry Stadium. It's halftime. And Nichols leads Southeastern 14 to 13. We'll take a break and come back with our thoughts on the first half right after this from Strawberry Stadium. This is Southland Conference Football on WHNO TV 20 Sports. It's your move. You have until sundown. It's a great table you made, Des. Relive an old place? Yep. Football. Me. 1991. The ball's in the air. Howard catches it clean, makes one man miss, breaks to the left side of the field. It's a foot race. Goodbye. Hello. Pose. Hello. Man, that ain't right. 
It is delicious. Ugh. Why does she pack these things? I ate one by accident last time. And we won. It's good luck. But it tastes like a dirty old tree branch. What the heck is Quino? But this is for first place. What is that, a loofah? It's a Quino. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Everybody needs beauty, as well as bread. Places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. The mountains are calling and I must go. Experience world-class interior comfort and convenience in the new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. Soft touch premium materials and leather seating create a luxurious ride. Relax in a quiet tuned cabin with Bose Centerpoint sound system, leather heated steering wheel and intuitive controls, including the customizable 8 inch driver information center, keep you comfortably in command. The new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. World class luxury designed around you. ATT presents Be the Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling my challenge. Hashtag your entry, be the fan, on Twitter, Instagram, or Vine for your opportunity to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Now go make me proud. When conference football, Ken Berthelot along with Gary Barbaro, and at halftime, the Nichols Colonels surprising the Southland Conference undefeated Lions by leading 14 to 13. Gary Barbaro, your thoughts on the first half? Because for a good portion of the first half, the Lions looked a little out of rhythm, out of sync. They definitely did. We saw early on in the game there were a lot of penalties, uh, false starts, and things that actually stalled drives, cost them uh, early on instead of getting a touchdown in one of their first drives. They had to end up uh, settling for a field goal. Nichols, on the other hand, has played a much more aggressive game. Defensively, they've been more physical. Offensively, what can you say uh, about Toscani Figaro? He's just taken his game on his shoulders, you know, running the ball extremely well, making some good passes. It's going to be quite interesting to see what happens in the second half. You know, Coach Ron Roberts, he talks about uh, his defensive coordinator, Pete Golding, makes good adjustments. Well, this is a time where we're going to have to see what he does to, to control that uh, Nichols offense. And Southeastern has made the adjustments at halftime all year, so the pressure will be on the Colonels and the Lions. Hey, right now, down on the field, Aaron Cofill has the commissioner of the Southland Conference, Tom Burnett. So let's go down to Aaron. Aaron? I sure do, Commissioner, in your 11th year yeah. this Sunday. Here it is again, the FCS Playoff Selection Show in the Southland Conference. They look to be well represented. Well, we're certainly proud in this 50th anniversary season that we've had a really great year on the field, and uh, that's being exemplified tonight. Certainly the great year and the excitement here in the Hammond community has been fantastic, and we've got some great teams at McNeese State and Sam Houston State. And, of course, we're watching a Nichols team playing in a great rivalry game and doing a great job so far. Something that the Southland Conference has done this season is they've they've released each week they've had a different position because they're working towards the all-time Southland Conference team. And I understand this is something that you're very excited about, but we'll release it on Saturday. Yeah, it's finally coming to an end, and we're really excited. We have such a great legacy in football, and just a little bit of a, a, a an announcement here tonight is our team will have players that played a combined 270 years in the NFL. So these are fantastic high-level players, some of them in, the, in Hall of Fames, and we're really proud of our legacy, and that continues certainly this season and in the future. Now, the Southland Conference is growing. Next season, you will add three teams for football. Just share with me just more about that growth. Yeah, you know, we're going to add Abilene Christian, Houston Baptist, and Incarnate Word out of San Antonio, and we're really excited. It's going to be the, the most football teams we've ever had as a conference, and that's going to give us more conference games, and that was something very important to our school presidents and athletic directors as they fill out schedules year after year. And we think the addition of more conference games is going to help us with postseason bids as well. It gives us chances to win more games. So, uh, got, got some work to do, and you know, but uh, these are great additions for us, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with football in the future. Now, you have been very 
very busy lately. The fall championship season is upon us. I know you're headed to volleyball on Sunday in Corpus Christi. You've been to soccer. Just share with me, I guess, just some of the, the great things that happened this fall with the sport. Well, we're always excited about other sports. You know, cross country, we've got national qualifiers in that sport. Uh, soccer gets better and better every year. We had a great southeastern team really go up and play against a, a wonderful Nebraska team uh, earlier this week and do a, a, a great job. You know, volleyball is getting better and better. We have a great legacy in that sport as well, including a team that's gone to the Final Four in volleyball. So there's always something going on. And, of course, basketball started. So we're really excited about some of the early results so far and, and look forward to our tournament in March in uh, Katy, Texas. And then finally, the South and Commerce, I know, is excited to again be hosting uh, the FCS championship game. Yeah, you know, it's our fourth year. We've got, got our three-year deal renewed. So we're really proud of what, how we've kind of elevated that game. And, you know, we've been really excited about having a Southland team in the last two years. But regardless of who plays in that game, our conference has an obligation to provide our subdivision with the best championship possible. And we think we've got all the elements in Frisco. Great stadium, great people to work with, and should be a lot of fun on January 4th. All right, thanks so much. That game will be played, as you mentioned, in Frisco. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron. And then again, Tom Burnett, the commissioner of the Southland Conference. We are at halftime, and Nichols is surprising the Southeastern Lions, who sit atop all by themselves the Southland Conference standings right now. That big first place standing in jeopardy, unless the Lions can find a way to do something in the second half of this football game. Back in a moment to Hammond, Louisiana, and Strawberry Stadium. Banning from the internet is... That's it's like, the worst that's thing unspeakable. You can I will run away. I will just bolt from... Bye-bye. What is there left in the world? Like, how would... Oh, my God, I would have to go to the library. We have a library? Yeah, 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 we do. I, I passed it once. Michael, what would you do without the internet? I would probably have to do my homework. <gasps> without the internet, that would be so hard. Like, how do you look up answers? I don't... Like, I don't even know. When Dr. Wilford opened her new dental practice, she relied on the experts at Bright House Media Strategies to create an advertising plan to establish her new practice. And that made everyone smile. Call Bright House Media Strategies, smart solutions for advertisers. Banning from the internet is... That's it's like, the worst that's thing unspeakable. You can I will run away. Oh, just bolt from... Bye-bye. What is there left in the world? Like, how would... Oh my God, I would have to go to the library. We have a library? Yeah, 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 we do. I, I passed it once. Michael, what would you do without the internet? I would probably have to do my homework. <gasps> without the internet, that would be so hard. Like, how do you look up answers? I don't, like, I don't even know. Stadium here in Hammond, Louisiana, Southland Conference football in Nichols right now surprising Southeastern 14 to 13. Erin Cofill is on the sidelines and she is visiting with both athletic directors, J.R. Teagues from Southeastern and Rob Bernardi from Nichols State. Erin, take it away. I sure am, guys. J.R. Teague's over here. He's trying to get a look at the band over there. I said, I need you, coach. I need you, coach. Well, I call you coach because I first met you when you were the head coach of the baseball team, but you are now the athletic director here at Southeastern University. Talk to me a little bit about the change and just how excited are you for the new opportunity? You know, I'm very excited. You still call me coach, but I'm very excited about this. You know, it's we got a lot of great things going on right now. Coach Roberts and his staff, the excitement he's brought in football. You can kind of see it. You know, last weekend with Sam Houston, this weekend Nichols, you know, playing for the championship. It's a lot of fun. Perfect time to be an AD. Well, in Southeastern, so of course they clinched at least a share of the Southland Conference title, but also a berth to the FCS playoffs for the first time. And, and being able to host a home game in that is something that you've really made a mission. Absolutely. You know, it's a big game tonight to try to get that, that bye week next week and host a playoff game. We put some aggressive bids in because we want to host. And our coaching staff, our players, and our fans deserve a host site. We're going to do everything we can do. We just got to win this ball game. All right. Well, how weird is it for you to not be out at the baseball field every day? And just talk to me about uh, the guy taking over. I know he was on your staff. 
Yeah, it's a little different. I try to stay away from the ballpark because I start feeling a little uh, bad at times. But, you know, Matt Rod's going to be the new head baseball coach right now. He's our interim. And Matt actually played for me and coached with me for six years. Great guy. You know, I consider him almost like family. I've been with him so long. But he's going to do a great job. I feel like I'm just handing the baton off, and he's going to run with it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks a bunch. All right. Switching gears now to Rob Bernardi. Talk to me. This is a very big rivalry game. It has gone back and forth. Nichols actually leads the all-time series 12-10 to 10 when it comes to that Riverball trophy. So just share with me just the excitement surrounding this game. Well, it is a great rivalry. I mean, we're the, probably the closest two institutions in the Southland Conference. We have a long-standing tradition. A lot of our players played are from the New Orleans, Baton Rouge area, and they played against each other in high school, and they certainly remember each other and their, their battles in high school, and it's carried over here. And then we add the Riverbill Classic, uh, the, the trophy, which goes back to the early 70s. So there's something to play for. Well, I know Southeastern's had a terrific year, and we haven't had as good of a year, but there's still something to play for. So that makes, that's what makes a great rivalry. And just looking at some of the other sports programs at Nichols, I know the, the girls soccer team did well this season. We really did. We um, we finished 12 and 6, uh, and a, and made the conference tournament the first time in a few years. We have the uh, the player of the year in the conference, which we never had. Uh, and so I've got to give a lot of credit to Dylan and, uh, Harrison, our our coach, and the team. They they have progressed over the last five years and gotten to a point to where they're very competitive in the league, and that's what we're trying to do in all our sports. And I know girls basketball, I guess, would be another sport to maybe touch on that they're expected to have a good season, too. Coach Plazon's finished 19-10 and 10 last year, finished fourth in the, in the conference, and we're off to a good year this year. We uh, beat South Alabama last night, 68-60, and I have every reason to believe we'll have another successful year in women's basketball. All right, thank you so much. Thanks, Aaron. Guys? Thank you very much, Aaron. Two very good athletics directors, and you look at what J.R. Teague's uh, has just been promoted to athletics director here at Southeastern. He knows that he's got to get a playoff game. Uh, they're going to pull out all the stops to make the bid. Sort of like baseball in Super Regionals. You just make the bid, and financially, if you can get the, the right things to happen, you can host a game. But in order to do that, you probably have to be a conference champion and, and not one that shares a title because that could uh, cost Southeastern desperately in their bid to host. And Jay's an excellent fundraiser. What he did in raising funds for his baseball program here at Southeastern is amazing. Now, you look at what Rob Bernardi has done. He's got the smallest budget of almost any school in the FCS in this two-state area. And with that, he manages to put on a football program. He manages to, to get the funds where he, he needs the funds. And when you look at what these two gentlemen have had to do to juggle the balls, to make things happen uh, at their res respective schools, it's really amazing. So congratulations to Rob Bernardi and J.R. Teagues on the fine jobs they have done as, as uh, Jay as a coach and now an athletic director and Rob as an AD. We'll take a break. We're at halftime. Southland Conference football at Strawberry Stadium in Hammond. Nichols leads Southeastern by one, 14-13. Back in a moment. When Dr. Wilford opened her new dental practice, she relied on the experts at Bright House Media Strategies to create an advertising plan to establish her new practice. And that made everyone smile. Call Bright House Media Strategies, smart solutions for advertisers. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. Banning from the internet is... That's it's like, the worst that's thing unspeakable. I will run away. Oh, just bolt from... Bye-bye. What is there left in the world? Like, how would... Oh, my God, I would have to go to the library. We have a library? Yeah, 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 we do. I, I passed it once. Michael, what would you do without the internet? I would probably have to do my homework. <gasps> without the internet, that would be so hard. But how do you look up answers? I don't, like, I don't even know.
to Strawberry Stadium in Southland Conference football in Hammond, Louisiana late. You're not going to have to clean your glasses. That uh, score is correct. Nichols is leading Southeastern. 14-13. That's Nichols. That's 1-5 in, in the Southland. And Southeastern, that is 6-0 and oh in conference standings. And uh, one of the big things that uh, the Colonels have been able to do is keep Brian Bennett in check and control the time of possession. 16-49 for the Colonels, only 13-11 for Southeastern, and that was a key. Exactly. When we talked to Coach uh, Stubbs early on, that's what he wanted to do, trying to dictate the, the tempo of the game, uh, minimize the amount of time that Southeastern's offense and Brian Bennett has an opportunity to work the ball. If you look at what Brian Bennett did early on, he started out 8 of 10, on his original passes, and now he's ended up 10 of 16. So his last uh, seven passes, he's two for seven. Let's take a look at the stats of the first half in this game. And again, time of possession may not be up there for you to see it, but uh, yeah, it is 16-49 for the Colonels and Southeastern 13-11. Remember, when Nichols defeated Northwestern earlier this year, they held the ball for 42 of the 60 minutes of play. And take a look at the rushing, passing, and total yardage. Any surprises there, Gary? Uh, I'd say... uh, Southeastern has to really be surprised that Nichols is, play, Nichols is playing such a, a balanced game. If you look at the, the stats there, first downs, uh, Nichols has 11, Southeastern 13. So, you know, they're playing very, very close to matching play for play with what Southeastern is doing. And, and I don't think anybody really expected that to happen with that high-powered offense that Southeastern has. Southeastern has done a pretty good job of keeping Toscani Figaro in check. And Brian Bennett has had his big plays, but number three right there, Mr. Bennett, the Oregon transfer, uh, he has had some big plays, but Nichols has stuck to their game plan, and they've limited those big plays, and that's kept the Colonels in this ball game. Well, a couple of things I think we need to look at is, first off, if you look at the fumbles that were created in this game, Nichols has zero fumbles, zero lost, obviously. Southeastern had four fumbles. They only lost one, so you know that opportunity uh, for them to get turnovers is, is what Nichols is trying to do. So that would be one of the big things. And then the penalties uh, on Southeastern side has stymied some of their drives. Well, Coach Ron Roberts' team has always been able to rally in the second half this year. Let's see if they can do it. We'll be back with the second half of this football game right after this from Strawberry Stadium on the campus of Southeastern in Hammond, Louisiana. This is Southland Conference football on WHNO TV 20. It's your move. You have until sundown. watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog will come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweet stakes every week by tackling my challenge. Hashtag your entry, be the fan, on Twitter, Instagram, or Vine for your opportunity to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Now go make me proud. This is presented by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center, committed to providing the best in quality, comprehensive services when it comes to patient care. Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. Ready for second half football. The Lions had won the toss, deferred, so at the time when they need it, they get the ball first to start the second half. Ken Berthelot, Gary Barbaro, Aaron Cofield down on the field, and we're ready for a second-half football game here. What you want to see Southeastern come out and get the ball first, obviously, on, on receiving the kickoff. They want to reestablish their, their offensive uh, philosophy of, of controlling the ball, quick up tempo, take what's there, score fast, and, and run a lot of people in and out of the game. Andrew Dolan to kick it deep. And the Lions were expecting a shorter kick. And uh, Xavier Roberson will not be able to return. So let's go downstairs to Aaron Cofill, who talked with Southeastern coach Ron Roberts as the team came out of the locker room. 
I did. I asked him what he told his team. He said, you know, he told him, you know, guys, we've been making a lot of mistakes. We're really not playing very well. But what I'm missing most is that you guys don't seem to have a sense of urgency. So he challenged his teams to find that, as we've seen this season. I mean, just last week, they outscored Sam Houston State 17-0 to in the second half. So I'd expect them to come out and have a good second half yet again. Bennett on the option with a good toss late. And men don't count these lines out. They have come out with that sense of purpose that they needed so badly as Darius Guy on the pitch picks up big yardage, 23 yards, and moves the chains. That play was made possible by Brian Bennett. He did an excellent job extending that play out and making the defensive back commit before he pitched the ball. First and 10 for the Lions at the 48-yard line. Good play action. Bennett looking, has a man. It is caught inside the 35-yard line, and that is Smiley, just Smiley on the catch. And again, two plays, two first downs for the Lions, a 22-yard gain. Well, Aaron mentioned that uh, Coach Roberts said they had to find a sense of urgency, and I think they found it in the last <laughs> two plays. They're moving it down the field pretty, pretty rapidly. Well, the Lions got the message of Coach Roberts, didn't they? First down, 10. Bennett taking his time with this one. Roberson looking for run up the middle. They tried to strip the football. Couldn't get it. Flag is thrown as Roberson heads up the middle and is tackled just short of first down yardage. Holding offense, number 78. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's D.J. Williams. The junior, 320-pound right guard from Jersey City, New Jersey. Ken, it's uh, starting to look like what they did in the first half. Uh, they moved the ball pretty well and then self-inflicted wounds with penalties. Five penalties so far for 33 yards for the Lions. And that makes it first down 20, moving the ball back to the 40-yard line of Southeastern, of uh, brother of Nichols. Almost picked wow. off, and had it been picked off, Cameron Brown was going to the house. That's the opportunity that you can't pass up. He had a good read on it. He'd still be running if he catches that one. Cameron Brown, six foot two fifteen sophomore, hails from Southern Lab High School. Bennett would like to have that one back, and in this case, he gets it back. <laughs> Second down, twenty. By himself back there. Five wide outs, three to the bottom of your screen. He's looking to the top. Bennett scrambling, cuts inside nicely and dives inside the 30-yard line down to the Colonel 29-yard line. A gain of 11. Good, good pocket presence there by Brian Bennett. Felt the pressure, was able to sidestep, elude it, and picked up some positive yards. Gained back, uh, made it. It's still third and long, but still something that's manageable for, for that young man. Lines two of six on third down conversions, and Bennett will send three wideouts to the top of your screen and one to the bottom. Keep Roberson back there to protect him against the three-man, now four-man rush. Here's the toss, and it's incomplete. I'm not sure if a defender, Cameron Brown, got a hand on that or not, but that'll bring up fourth down. And now decision time for the Lions, trailing by one on this opening drive of the second half. Let's see if Cameron Brown gets his hand in there. If he was just in, he was close enough that he distracted the wide receiver's his vision. It still should have been a caught uh, pass. So Sebastian has kicked two field goals tonight, and he's getting ready to try a third. This one from 46 yards. He's got this range easily. He's perfect on the season. It's long enough. It is good. <laughs> From 46 yards, Seth Sebastian, 3 for 3 on field goals tonight, 14 of 14 on the year. What more can you ask of this young man? And the Lions regain the lead, 16 to 14. Money in the bank, Seth Sebastian. Uh, anywhere on the field, it seems like he can, he'll, he'll put it through. A field goal kicker that you can count on, oh, so critical. You have to be impressed with him because, you know, some of these uh, kicks are not, as they say, give me's. Well, Martin Anderson, the great place kicker for the New Orleans Saints, said some place kickers 
get nervous on, on long kicks or pressure kicks, and others just thrive on it. They live on it. He was one that thrived on it, lived on it. He used to like it when coaches would try to ice him because he said it just gave him more time to, to picture it in his mind and vision the ball going through. But he said you've got to call a timeout. You've got to try to sometimes ice a kicker, not in a situation like that, but in critical kicks because you just don't know. He says probably three-quarters of the kickers are more of a head case than the quarter who thrive on that pressure. I think Sebastian's going to be a kicker when he kicks on Sunday in the National Football League who's going to be one of those who thrives on pressure. And the Lions will bounce this one out of bounds in front of Fortson. So Southeastern, I mean, pardon me, Nichols will have great field position at the 35-yard line. The scoring drive, six plays, covered 46 yards in two minutes and three seconds. And Sebastian, 46-yard field goal, but what stopped the lines on that play? The penalties. Penalty flag. Penalties got him again. Penalties got him again. They have picked up 45 yards on the first two plays and then one yard on the last three. Can't say it enough how penalties just stop you dead in your tracks. So Tuscany Figaro works under center on the first offensive possession for Nichols and hands off to Michael Henry, the sophomore from Baton Rouge Episcopal. He gets a yard, and again, you're seeing Reggie Wilson and Michael Henry get some runs because Marcus Washington, the senior running back from Lillian, Alabama, and Foley High School, is lost for the season with a knee. Dalton Hilliard, Jr., a broken arm in the Sam Houston game a couple of weeks ago. He's lost for the season. DeMond Bolt, you haven't heard his name at wide receiver. But he's out with a foot injury. Josh Hanbury, haven't seen him tonight. He's got a, or suffered a concussion in the Sam Houston game and hasn't been back since. Here's a big hole for Michael Henry, and he moves the chains across the 50 into southeastern territory at the 49-yard line, a pickup of 16. We saw this earlier in the first half, and they came right back to it. You know, the first play, they tried it off tackle on the right-hand side. They stymied it pretty good, but blew a hole wide open on the left-hand side. Good yardage. Good read, good vision. And here he is looking for a defensive back to run into. Nine carries, 70 yards from Michael Henry. Probably thought he wasn't going to see limited action this year. And because of, again, that plethora of injuries that Nichols has suffered this year, he's seeing a lot of it. Play action. Figaro in trouble, and he'll throw it away. Wise play. Got to be impressed with the young man. Uh, taking what's there, if the play, he's not forcing anything. Uh, no interceptions, and no fumbles at this point. Good, smart ball. Passing, coming into the game for 996 yards. So tonight, Figaro has gone over the 1,000-yard mark, throwing the football. Now has seven rushing touchdowns with the scores in this game, and boy, he just has taken it upon his shoulders. He really has. He stepped up. Colonel's looking at second down 10. Figueroa wants a keeper all the way. Hard fought yardage right up the middle to the 48-yard line. Brings up that third and long. And that's what Southeastern's goal was to get Nichols in third and long, and Nichols was trying to stay away from that to sustain long drives and eat up clock. They've, they've done it uh, on occasions in the first half, got Nichols in the third and long occasions, but uh, Tuscany Figaro has, has figured out a way to, on a lot of occasions, pick up that, that long yardage on third down. The guy to watch, or both of them, are up high on your screen. Figaro, lots of time, and he'll throw it right across the middle of Brad Nelson. Nelson's tackled before he can make the first down. The senior with a nice catch, but nowhere to run after he grabs the football. Yeah, Brought Morris down. Sutton makes, makes the tackle on it. He get, did a good job. Gave him just enough to, so he could catch the ball, but stopped him about five yards short of that first down. Yeah, Sutton's all over him. The 5'10 junior from St. Augustine, New Orleans. Well, on fourth down six, Colonel say we're not punting. We're going for it. Or will they quick kick here? And they will. Figaro 
with a quick kick picked up on the fly and returned. Room. Jarrell Bennett with a nice return. And the Lions will have some excellent field position when we come back. 10-01 to play in the third quarter. Nichols trailing Southeastern, who has retaken the lead by the score of 16-14. to 14. Back in a moment. It's a great table you made, Des. Relive an old place? Yep. Football. Me. 1991. The ball's in the air. Howard catches it clean, makes one man miss, breaks to the left side of the field. It's a foot race. Goodbye. Hello. Pose. Hello. Man, that ain't right. It is delicious. Experience world-class interior comfort and convenience in the new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. Soft-touch premium materials and leather seating create a luxurious ride. Relax in a quiet tuned cabin with Bose Centerpoint sound system, leather-heated steering wheel and intuitive controls, including the customizable 8-inch driver information center, keep you comfortably in command. The new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. World-class luxury designed around you. Everybody needs beauty, as well as bread. Places to play in, and pray in, where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul. The mountains are calling, and I must go. Turn. Southeastern has their best starting field position of the night. It was their own 25. This time they start from their own 47. Let's see how that might aid this offense on a quick handoff. And look out. Here goes Devontae Scott down the sideline. Touchdown, Southeastern. That sense of urgency has shown up very rapidly. A 53-yard Devontae Scott run. And the Lions have just opened up. A bigger lead, 22 to 14 over the Colonels, and we wait for the Seth Sebastian exclamation point. So we watch the replay here. It's kind of a modified reverse, and once they get to turn that corner, there's nobody uh, deep enough to to cut off to run to the end zone. Well designed play. Boy, when the Lion. And he kicks it up and good. When the Lion wideouts hit those corners on the outside, hit those sidelines, they can turn on the afterburners and go. It seemed like there was a short corner there, so he didn't really have to get extended. There was, was no lateral pursuit from Nichols. And once he made that, that short corner and turned up field, he was gone. We'll have more college football this weekend on WHNO Sports as the Tulane Green Wave plays host to the UTEP Miners, the University of Texas El Paso Miners. You can watch the replay Sunday at noon on WHNO TV 20 Sports, the final home game of the year for Tulane's Green Wave. Coach Curtis Johnson doing a fine job with the Green Wave in his second year, as Ron Roberts has done here at Southeastern. Two years, he's turned this Southeastern program around. That was a one-play, 53-yard drive, nine seconds. Scott now rushed twice for 64 yards. And this kick will not be returned. So the Colonels will start it at their own 25-yard line here in the third quarter. And this game is taking the same personality as many of the Southeastern games this year. As you look at Scott on the sideline, getting some congratulations. 6'2", 181 pounds from a sophomore from St. Augustine High School. Boy, St. Aug turns out some fine players. All eyes this year, of course, on Leonard Fournette. Wondering if somebody can take him from the grasp of the school up the road there, LSU. They're all going to be shooting at it, taking their shots. You know, we're talking about uh, 
Southeastern getting back and, and getting a sense of urgency, and obviously we've seen that. And, you know, the attendance here, the 68,812 people are finally having something that's been really stand up and cheer about. Figaro and a nice throw to Xavier Marcus for the completion. And don't count these colonels out yet. They come back with a little oomph. Big gain on the play of 25 yards to Marcus. His first catch of the day from Mandeville High School. The keeper Nichols here is they're ha going to have to put some points on the board, be it a field goal or a touchdown. They can't let this game get away from them. But they still follow their game plan of eating up a lot of clock, using as much of the play clock as possible, trying to shorten the game. If they can drive down here and score, they're still very much in this. Figaro, great protection. Got a lot of time. Now he throws to a wide open Fortson. And Fortson's inside the 15-yard line. Brought down there by Theo Alexander. A 36-yard gain. Two long pass plays from Toscani Figaro. And suddenly the Colonels are in the red zone and knocking on the door. Good patience. You hear Figaro is able to avoid the rush, sidestep, and waits for his wide receiver to get open downfield. He did take a shot after that uh, when he released the pass, but he, he seems to be okay. Figaro, 8 of 16, 136 yards tonight. Figaro, hand off to Henry. Henry over the right side, pushing inside the 10-yard line, pushing the rugby scrum further down. That was a good hard run by, by Henry. Stayed vertical, put his head down, drug some, some players, he gained some positive yards. Helmet comes off, so he has to leave the game for at least one play, and that brings Reggie Wilson, another sophomore from Franklinton High School, into the game. Toscani Figaro, son of Cedric Figaro, the great Notre Dame linebacker, and now a coach, by the way, at South Plaquemine High School, doing a fine job there in his second year there. Four and six this year in a rebuilding year. Took him to the playoffs, lost in the first round last year. Timeout. The Colonels will talk this one over. They're too close to mess anything up here. S staying with these southeastern lines, they've got to find a way to score. Well, this is that situation Coach, Coach Stubbs was talking about where they need to finish in the red zone. Well, let's go downstairs to Aaron Cofill and find out why these two teams are playing so hard because there's more than just a win at stake. Aaron? There sure is. There is a trophy. I got my hands on it. This is the Riverbell Trophy. These two schools, of all schools in the Southland Conference, they're the closest, just 94 miles apart. The rivalry began in the early 70s. It's continued throughout even South, uh, Southeastern Drops football. They brought it back. This is what they're playing for. The trophy was redesigned last season. But they've got it. It's nice and shiny new and ready for the taking for whoever wins this game. Now, Aaron, did you carry that trophy all the way out there? That looks like a heavy piece of hardware there. <laughs> way all by myself. That was my workout <laughs> for the day. We're proud of you up here. <laughs> <laughs> nice with that beautiful trophy. And that will be presented to the winning team after this game, as well as if Southeastern wins this game, then... They would get the undisputed Southland Conference title trophy. Charlie Stubbs, though, says, wait a minute. We still have something to say about this. Well, he's done a fine job building a program in a different way than most other coaches have built it. We'll talk about it later. Reggie Wilson with a big hole over the middle. Wilson into the end zone. Touchdown! Reggie right. Wilson right up the middle. The 5'6 sophomore was hit and didn't break. Went right into the end zone for the score. Good, solid run. Offensive line did a fantastic job there, popping that, that middle open. Good, hard run by the running back. Nichols needed that to, to stay in this game. Uh, if they don't come, come down and get some type of score, it gets out of hand really quickly. If there was a momentum swinging play for the Colonels, that was it. Andrew Dolan, it's blocked. Look out. It's being returned. This will be for some points. Here come the Lions, one man to beat. And this one's going all the way. Southeastern Harlan Miller takes it back. We'll have to watch the replay and see where they, the block actually came from. But, you know, that'll take the wins out of your sail. You come down, you work so hard, get the touchdown, and then get the extra point. 
That's 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 tough right there. What a big play. And we'll talk about it. That's a two-point score for the Lions on the blocked field goal and return by Harlan Miller. And you see the touchdown scored by Reggie Wilson. It's 25-20. Southeastern gets two after the nickel score. It's your move. You have until sundown. Why does she pack these things? I ate one by accident last time. And we won. It's good luck. But it tastes like a dirty old tree branch. What the heck is Quino? But this is for first place. What is that, a loofah? It's a Quino. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. We could say a lot about the most track-tested IS ever. About its stiffer suspension. Its precise steering. And its more rigid chassis. But the truth is, we don't have to. The experts have spoken. Now, it's your move. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling my challenge. Hashtag your entry Be The Fan on Twitter, Instagram, or Vine for your opportunity to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Now go make me proud. Five-yard drive in a minute, 39 seconds, but the extra point was blocked. Harlan Miller returned all the way for two points, and... You now have, instead of a two-point lead by Southeastern, a five-point lead by the Lions at 25 to 20. And this one is coming back. Xavier Roberson lassoed. Can he escape? He does once. He does twice. Look at Roberson. A third and fourth time. An escape artist being chased from behind. And he's near the 35-yard line. What a dangerous return man he is. He's got three touchdowns this year already on kickoff returns. So, you know, until you put him on the ground, he's nonstop. Well, Xavier Roberson leads the nation in returns, averaging 38.2 yards a return. Got 33 on this one, and he just showed why he can take it all the way. He's done that three times. He's returned three kickoffs for touchdowns this year. Has five in his career. But until that play, Roberson has been rather quiet in this game. There's a toss right side. Marquise Hayes over there, I believe, on the reception. Nichols looks like they, they've got good position, but they'll, they'll take the inside fake and allows that wide receiver to get to the corner and pick up some additional yards. That should have been held for a minimal gain, and we're, we're looking at about a nine-yard pickup. Before this drive started for Southeastern, the Lions had 109 yards offense in the second half and Nichols 96, but the Lions want to add some more to it here. The Lions have been a second-half team all year, proving to maybe that, that in this ball game. and there's a big completion down to the 35-yard line, right into the hands of Byron Johnson, the sophomore from Zachary High School, a 23-yard gain, Johnson's first catch of the evening. You see in Southeastern spread the ball around to so many different receivers. They'll throw to as many as 11 receivers and have four or five running backs touch the football and get carries in the game. Here's the fake to Sutton and the toss out to Juwan Rogers, his first catch in the game. So now you're seeing some packages for players who don't normally get the football and Southeastern's moving down the field with it now in the red zone inside the 20 of the Colonels. If you notice how poised and comfortable Brian Bennett looks in that pocket back there. Well, he does. Bennett on the keep after a good fake. He's tripped up at the five-yard line and falls to the two. He thought he was in, and he was close. But how's this for a up-tempo, quick answer by the Lions to the nickel score? A 15-yard gain by Bennett. And look quickly up to the line. Nichols still trying to adjust defensively. 
Bennett with the give. Cody Sutton. Is he in? It looks like they marked him a little bit short, Ken. Yes. Yep. Gave it to him. He's in. Touchdown. Touchdown for Cody Sutton, the sophomore from Texarkana, Texas, and the transfer from Wyoming. You saw a flag being tossed. Don't know what, what that's all about. That is the sixth touchdown of the year for Cody Sutton. From that time, you heard some names you have not heard all game for the Southeastern Lions, and that goes to the quality of depth. Fresh legs against a Nichols defense that's been riddled by injury. Our referee is Ross Smith. Cody Sutton getting a little tap on the shoulder for stretching it out and getting the football into the end zone. Seth Sebastian again with the point. He's had one block, otherwise he's been perfect this year. And we will take a break with six minutes and 34 seconds to play in the third quarter. Southeastern has opened up a 12-point lead over Nichols here at Strawberry Stadium Southland Conference Action on WHNO TV 20 Sports. the initial Southeastern field goal with a one minute 39 second drive for a touchdown. Of course the extra point was returned for two by Harlan Miller. Then Southeastern comes back, back with their own one minute 26 second drive and now leads 32 to 20 on that drive. Brian Bennett three for three for 50 yards, one rush for 15 yards, but more importantly, They've eliminated penalties. You know, they had one penalty on their very first drive after in the second half, ended up getting a field goal. Ever since then, no penalties, and you see the points just starting to, to stack up. When you don't stop yourself, amazing uh, what can happen. Carrie Fortson on the return. Hit hard at the 15-yard line and spilled. Good solid tackle. Good solid tackle there. 13-yard return. And another thing that we, we need to look at is, I mentioned it earlier, these second half drives, if you look how comfortable Brian Bennett is in the pocket, he's sitting back there almost window shopping, looking for the wide receivers to come out, got some good clearing routes, allowing his, his under uh, crossing routes to open up. The Colonels have not brought a lot of pressure against Brian Bennett. I think choosing rather to try to limit his big plays. They did very well with that in the first half. First half of the defense played very well. Second half, Bennett's finding a way to spring. And here's a run right up the middle by the Colonels. That's Michael Henry again. Reggie Wilson, Michael Henry getting all of the ball carrying work for the Colonels, replacing the injured Dalton Hilliard Jr. and Marcus Washington. You know, one thing we haven't talked about yet, you look at Nichols and they're really an all-star lineup of dads who had success in college in the National Football League with Toscani Figaro, the son of Cedric Figaro, the linebacker at Notre Dame, Bo Bear, who we have not seen play, son of Bobby Bear, Northwestern State, South LaFouche High School, New Orleans Saints, and Atlanta Falcons. 
Picked off. Southeastern with a big steal by Denzel Thompson, the junior from Faraday. And he played that one perfect. Looked like he, they settled down into a zone. And he just sat there and waited for the, uh, the wide receiver to come underneath and just floated right into him. I don't know if uh, Tuscany Figueroa even saw him before he released the ball. We'll look at the, the replay here. It actually looks like Figueroa was looking downfield, and then when he turned to, to dump the ball off, not the play to make. Denzel Thompson made a, a very nice play. First turnover by the Colonels here in the second half. Here's a screen left side. Jeremy Myers, his first catch of the evening, and he's down to the five-yard line. If you're hearing a lot of new names for Southeastern, it's because they keep fresh legs in there. You see some congratulations being awarded to Denzel Thompson after that pick. Straight ahead, a rugby scrum push down to the one yard line. Rashid Harrell trying to get it over will be stopped just short. Southeastern, that was their 14th interception of the year as a team. Brian Bennett, will he take it himself or give to Harold? Harold trying to put the explanation point on this one. He stopped right at the goal line. Man, he had a good jump, and I thought he got over. We do not have a good angle here in the press box, but the jump and stop by the defense. Actually looked like he had to go a little bit more vertical than, than he wanted to. Wasn't able to get that forward procedure. Brian Bennett, he'll keep it himself. Into the end zone, touchdown. Flag is down, though. Hold it. Flag on the play. So I didn't see anything, Gary. I didn't see it either. Not sure yet. Personal foul, face mask, defense number four. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. We'll do the try. Up to this point, Nichols had not done anything to hurt themselves, which has allowed them to stay very close to the best team in the Southland Conference. And on this drive, they have hurt themselves with the turnover, well, the turnover on, on their offensive possession, right. and then this penalty, which is going to give South, Southeastern great field position again. The swinging gate works. They'll throw for two incomplete should, in a crowd. Should have been picked. But the Lions have a now pretty convincing 38 to 20 lead with 4:51 to go and great field position because they'll have a 15-yard penalty, which is going to allow Southeastern, if they want, to try something fancy with a squib kick if they'd like. Well, obviously uh, that penalty is not something that you'd want to see happen. Uh, hopefully Nichols is not getting a little. Uh, frustrated with uh, the way turn of events in the second half. What they'll need to do is uh, hopefully, you know, get good position, uh, field position on this kickoff, go down and score some points. As we talked about earlier, uh, Nichols had a respond. They did score a touchdown, but then they went into and got the uh, the extra point blocked, which scored points. So it takes a lot of the uh, a lot of the emphasis out of the, the scores. For all the latest news on high school, college, and pro sports in Louisiana, be sure to visit SportsNola.com. SportsNola features a team of area writers offering unique opinions. Plus, you can catch our first NBC video updates. It's all at SportsNola.com. One thing that the Lions' success has done this year is bring a lot of pride back to this program and unite this Hammond community behind this line football team. Today's newspaper in the Hammond Star front page, just 90% uh, reminiscing about the pride the old timers have in watching Ron Roberts bring this program back to the notoriety which it has deserved this year. Well, you know, it really was disappointing when Southeastern actually did away with football for a number of years. It was it was sad to see that happen. So, you know, everybody's got to be really enthused with the And they the do onside. with that penalty try, the onside kick. A big scramble for it. The Lions are saying they have it. What do the officials say? And a flag is down also. Did it 
Did it carry? Flag is down up at the 50-yard line. Not sure if the lines are were offside on that. We'll have to wait for the officials to sort this one out. And why not? You're up 38-20. You've got a team that had a little head of steam. Now you're taking it away from them if you're Ron Roberts and the lines. Try this. You trust your defense at this stage of the game when maybe Nichols was a little down on itself after the turnover and the score by the Lions. Well, again, we're looking at some of the, uh, the halftime adjustments that uh, Pete Golding, defensive coordinator for Southeastern, made. Obviously, they, they saw something uh, on that interception. Kicking team. That penalty is declined. We have illegal touching at the spot of the football. First down. That drive after the Denzel Thompson interception of Tuscany Figaro was a four-play, 16-yard drive. Took only 58 seconds. Now you'll see the illegal touching before the ball traveled the 10 yards. Nichols was fortunate. Of course, they had the, the penalty, so they would have had to re-kick it anyway if they did not recover that ball. But they're in good field position. They need to take advantage of this. Uh, definitely need to get, get down and get some points on the scoreboard. Trailing by 18, if the Colonels are going to go under any momentum back in their favor, this would be the drive where they have to do it. The other thing they have to look at is they have to do it in pretty quick fashion. They don't have the, uh, the luxury of having a, a lot of time, even though we still have about four, four minutes, 50 seconds in the third quarter. Uh, time is of the essence. Figaro works under center. Will hand off to Henry. He'll follow his left tackle up to the 45-yard line. Brought down there by A.J. Bowen. Got to be impressed with with the running uh, number 40. He's, he's done a good job. He's, he's getting good positive yards, protecting the ball. It's one of the things that we haven't seen any fumbles from him. 81 yards rushing on 12 carries. What more can you ask for this young man? Second down, six. Figaro from under center again. On the roll, the toss, and he's got the first down with a good pitch and catch. This time to carry Fortson. And Nichols needed to move the chains, and they did with a seven-yard completion to the senior from Longview, Texas. Again, you've got to be impressed with Tuscany Figaro, but had injuries not beset this Nichols football team. You'd never see him. Kalen Henderson from East St. John High School and a transfer from Tulsa was the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year against Oregon and all the way through the first half of the fantastic Western Michigan win. Fumble on the handoff. The Lions say they have it and so do the officials. Recovered by Justin Church. Young man with a great point average of 3.31. Two-time president and dean's list here at Southeastern. Headsey player, 6'4", 235, a junior from Fountain Blue High School. Let's take a look at the, the replay here. Mishandled. It's hard to tell if, if he actually was trying to give it to, to the running back or if, if it was just mishandled coming out of his hand. If it, he knocked it out of his hand when he tried to make the fake. Here's that version of the wishbone out of an shotgun formation. Bennett on the keeper and he's down to the 40. Aaron's going to have a special guest. We're going to visit with her in just a moment. But as a matter of fact, let's do that right now. There's a, oh, a little altercation down on the field. Flags are thrown. Brian Bennett's just protecting the football and staying out of that and I don't blame him. Hey, let's go downstairs while the officials start this out to Aaron Cofield who's got Wade Miley, pitcher for the Diamondbacks, and guess what? He's another proud Southeastern alumni who's uh, here to support what's happening with Lions football and Coach Ron Roberts. Aaron? All right, Wade, proud Southeastern alumni back in town for the game. How exciting is it to see what's going on with the football program? Um, it's awesome to come out. I've been coming to a couple games. Uh, they haven't lost one yet since I've been here, so it's, it's also awesome to see all the fans out here. It's just a good environment again. Talk to me about you and just your season. Just when you look back on it, did you have the kind of year that you wanted to? Oh uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it wasn't exactly like I wanted to. We uh, we didn't make the playoffs, so that's kind of what we strive for every year. But uh, it was a good year. It was fun, learning experience. Got to play with some more veteran guys and learn some more things. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. What do you miss the most about your time at Southeastern? 
I mean, I had a blast in Southeast and being around all the, all the friends you made coming into college and kind of kind of hitting that maturity level where you, you're living on your own, get away from home. Um, just, just miss playing, you know, over there at Pat Keneally Field and, and, and coming out here and watching football. All right, thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Guys? Facial hair that they used uh, many of the teams were in baseball this year, huh? Live Very special. Foul. I saw quite a bit of that. Blocking below the waist, number two at the spot of the foul. That 15 yard penalty would be enforced. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 99, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, those penalties offset. So Rashid Harrell penalized for the block. Cole Frazier, the big defensive lineman, 6'4, 240, a junior from Brother Martin, New Orleans, with the unsportsmanlike on the Colonels. And they sought all of that out. And with three minutes and 33 seconds to play in the third quarter, and the Lions up by 18, when it's all said and done, the football is placed at the 46-yard line of Southeastern. Tensions run high in rivalry games. They do, and frustration starting to set in. Well, here's that shotgun option. At the wishbone, look at this, all by himself, Marquise Hayes for the score. Southeastern has scored on all five drives in the second half now. That time, Marquise Hayes on a 54-yard play, and Southeastern has just opened up the dam. The floodwaters have hit. Now this offense is hitting on all cylinders without a doubt. See if we can get to the replay and see what happened, if it was just a blown coverage or if the uh, defensive back just squatted on what he thought was going to be an inside route. Seth Sebastian in to kick the point after and make it now a 45-20 to 20 ball game. And you know what's interesting there? The team's getting this big altercation. Everybody's mind is somewhere else. You're thinking the heated rivalry. You're thinking all of the extracurricular activity. They finally settle it down. They mark off the penalty. And what does Southeastern do with the offense? Boom, they go for the big one. Try to catch you off guard. They did that. Touchdown. Well what conceived. a play well by Marquise play. Hayes. And again, we can't talk enough about Brian Bennett, how comfortable he is sitting back in the pocket. Easy. Pitch and catch on that one. Yeah, B.T. Sanders was chasing him, but I'm not sure if that was his man. I think he was just trying to recover and run him down from behind. Yeah, it was hard to tell from, from the replay just now. So now Southeastern has scored on all five drives in the second half of this football game. We talked about how well the Lions make adjustments in the halftime locker room and what they have done to opponents. Sam Houston last week here on this field on Saturday. Hold the Bearcats to no points in the second half. Hold them scoreless. This time a two-play, a two-play, 51-yard drive. Took only 20 seconds. And then the Hayes touchdown for 54. Lions kick off. Leading 45-20. This one coming back. And Fortson, Gary Fortson. Gives the Colonels a little bit of breathing room, but men with three minutes and 13 seconds to play. Third quarter, the Lions of Southeastern have just shown why they are the best team in the Southland Conference. And what's interesting is if you look at where they're ranked, the Lions come in here, and it's almost like they're begging for respect as a football team. We'll talk about that in just a moment because the Colonels are ready to go. Figaro, he'll tuck it and run. Right side just runs out of bounds, gets some positive yardage. Southeastern is ranked 8th in the FCS poll, 10th in the coaches poll. They have defeated McNeese. They beat Sam Houston. They've even beaten Sanford on the season. And outside of Sanford, McNeese and Sam Houston are still ranked higher, at least in one poll, than the Lions. And that's just having to earn your respect. That's just the respect of McNeese and Sam Houston being there year after year after year. 
Well, you're right. They, you have to get that respect, and you earn that respect. And I think Southeast is making a good bid that uh, respect is coming their way. And for the Colonels, again, Michael Henry. You wouldn't be hearing his name tonight if injuries wouldn't have taken out Marcus Washington, Dalton Hilliard, son of Dalton Hilliard Sr., who played at Patterson, at LSU, with the New Orleans Saints. You'd probably be seeing some Bo A. Bear along with Kalen Henderson, the young man from East St. John who transferred from Tulsa. He was the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. Figaro with a screen to the right side. Going nowhere, Reggie Wilson hit and smothered. Well, Nichols uh, is now two of nine on third down conversions. Isaiah Corbett with a big stop from Belgrade, Florida, a junior. He's going to come back and one of the real leaders on this team. Right now, Jeremy Williams starting defensive end, a senior from Cypress, Texas, down for the lines, and they're attending to him with two minutes to play in the third quarter. But this Lions team, make no doubt about it, is for real. We'll take a break here, and when we come back, we'll see if the Colonels have an answer for what's happened in the third quarter to them by the Southeastern Lions. 45-20, Southeastern with the lead back in a moment. Dr. Meyer didn't think he could afford to advertise his growing chiropractic clinic until Bright House Media Strategies told him how he could advertise on Bay News 9 all day and not spend an arm and a leg. All Bright House Media Strategies, smart solutions for advertisers. Banning from the internet is... That's it's like, the worst that's thing unspeakable. I will run away. I will just bolt from... Bye-bye. What is there left in the world? Like, how... Oh my god, I'd have to go to the library. We have a library? Yeah, 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 we do. I, I passed it once. Michael, what would you do without the internet? I would probably have to do my homework. <gasps> without the internet, that would be so hard. Like, how do you look up answers? I don't, like, I don't even know. Banning from the internet is... That's it's like, the worst that's thing unspeakable. You can I will run away. I will just bolt from... Bye-bye. What is there left in the world? Like, how would... Oh, my God, I would have to go to the library. We have a library? Yeah, 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 we do. I, I passed it once. Michael, what would you do without the Internet? I would probably have to do my homework. <gasps> without the Internet, that would be so hard. Like, how do you look up answers? I don't... Like, I don't even know. Arkansas and others have found out that if you're not ready to play Southeastern in the second half, you're in trouble. At halftime in this game, the score was Nichols up by 1, 14-13. Southeastern's had the ball for only 5 minutes and 23 seconds in the third quarter. They've run 22 plays, garnered 258 yards, and put up 32 points. How's that big rush on the punter for the Colonels? And he gets a great roll before it goes out of bounds. There will be no return there by Jarrell Bennett. But how about, I'm going to go over those numbers again. That is a phenomenal stat with two minutes to play in the third quarter. Southeastern trailing by 1-14-13 at halftime. Has only had the ball five minutes and 23 seconds. Run 22 plays. Gone 258 yards uh, in this second half. And rolled up 32 points scoring on every offensive possession all five of their offensive possessions, they've had the football. That is amazing. What an explosive offense. Obviously, uh, we knew that coming in that they had that opportunity. Uh, the first half, they were just out of sync a little bit, but the second half has just been phenomenal. Well, we're going to see a different quarterback. Jordan Barnett is going to come in and hand off on first down. He's a 6'3", 205-pound junior from Captain Shreve in Shreveport. Brian Bennett taking a little bit of a breather. And Barnett's not just a mop-up quarterback. He has uh, seen some action. First of all, he is just a fine leader, both a vocal leader and a spiritual leader in this team. Everybody's familiar with the Drew Prees huddle thing. He's the guy who rocks and rolls with that for this Southeastern line football team. 
Lost a yard on the handoff, first down, 11. Try it again, Roberson. No, fake to Roberson. It's a keeper. And Barnett around the left side. But earlier this year, Barnett was able to come into the game against Sanford, who's ranked in the top 25. Brian Bennett was hurt on the first drive. And Jordan Barnett came in, brought the team home, and to victory against a very good team. But as I said, ranked in the top 25 in Sanford. Well, Coach Ron Roberts is still, he's very high. Third down, seven, oh. and he's got a man, Marquise Frugge. And Marcus Frugge is down inside the 35-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 35. And that'll move the chains for a first down. A 27-yard game. What an arm. That, that was a rocket. I don't know if you saw the release on that. Jared Barnett has a cannon. Aaron Cofill has an injury report from the sidelines. Aaron? I sure do, guys. We just saw Jeremy Williams go down. It is his right knee that the trainers are looking at. I'm told it is questionable as to whether or not he will return. Thank you for that. Jordan Barnett. We'll walk his team over to the sideline as the clock ticks down to zero in the third quarter of play. The third quarter was all Southeastern, opening up a 45-20 lead over the Nichols Colonels here at Strawberry Stadium in Hammond, Louisiana. The leading team in the Southland Conference just flexed its muscle and showed why they are atop the standings in Southland Conference play. Back in a moment with the fourth and final quarter. It's your move. You have until sundown. the Lee Corso Cornhole game to compete against the crew or your friends to win tons of awesome prizes from the Home Depot. Get tossing. Oh, come on! That's a hole! I hate watching with Ramsey. All he does is yell. They can't hear you, Ramsey. But every time he's come over this year, we've won. And he always brings Bud Light. Little dog won't come out from under the couch. But we're winning. I love you, Ramsey. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. on WHNO Sports is presented by Thibodeau Regional Medical Center, committed to providing the best in quality comprehensive services when it comes to patient care. Thibodeau Regional Medical Center. Start the fourth quarter and backup quarterback Jordan Barnett in for Brian Bennett will keep Barnett 20-15. Boy, Barnett pulls off fake so well and moves the chains again after a 20-yard gain. Good ball handling, good good play fake there. Opened wide up. He just took advantage of the seam. Barnett out of the gun. Gives to Rashid Harrell this time, and Harrell pulled down as he approaches the 10-yard line. Lorenza Young got help from Ronnie Walker. You know, one of the impressive things that happened in that third quarter, there were six plays of 20 yards or more by Southeastern in, that, in the third quarter alone. And that was one of the things that Charlie Stubbs wanted to try and eliminate is, is the big plays. And, again, some of the adjustments made at halftime took advantage of uh, something that they saw on the Nichols defense. Yeah, he really did. Here's the give 
Southeastern keeping it right up the middle. Rashid Harrell on the carry. Won't get it, but the Colonels, who did a great job of limiting those big plays in the first half, like almost every other team in the Southland Conference, had no answer for Southeastern in the second half. Coach Stubbs, don't feel bad here. No one's had an answer for the Lions in the second half. Now, this offense is hitting on all cylinders. I mentioned earlier, you will look at some of the statistics. You know, at halftime, Nichols had Nichols. 11. That is our second charge team timeout. Hold that thought. We'll take a break with this timeout by the Colonels and be back with more in just a moment. 45 20, the Lions leading and threatening at Strawberry Stadium in Hammond. Back in a moment. Experience world-class interior comfort and convenience in the new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. Soft-touch premium materials and leather seating create a luxurious ride. Relax in a quiet-tuned cabin with Bose CenterPoint sound system, leather-heated steering wheel, and intuitive controls, including the customizable 8-inch driver information center, keep you comfortably in command. The new 2014 Buick LaCrosse. World-class luxury designed around you. Adventures await in the Lexus LX, RX, and new seven-passenger GX. Dare to be spontaneous. Everybody needs beauty, as well as bread. Places to play in, and pray in, where nature may heal and give strength to body and so the mountains are calling and I must go facing third down and five Barnett showing that he can play this game toss into the end zone led his man too much Frugier reached out for it couldn't get it you know what's amazing about Barnett He's had an injury-riddled career here at Southeastern. As we look at him right there, 6'3", 205, a junior from Captain Shreve. He finally gets healthy last spring for the first time since 2011. He gets his health back, but he also gets Brian Bennett from the University of Oregon back. And uh, he's uh, get, making the most out of the time he gets on the field. Here's a bobble and almost pulled down by Jeff Smiley. Incomplete. He couldn't hold it. Once again, you see the arm strength that uh, Barnett has. He's, he throws darts, uh, impressed with the velocity that he has on his passes. That was a fourth down play. And watch it again. The ball was a little bit behind him. Still, wide receiver should have had it. And again, no reason to add on points right here with 13-31 to go. In control, classy move by the Lions. Just, and we're going to... Come up, either run up the middle, pass it up the middle. You stop us. If not, we score. Let's go downstairs to Erin Cofield. She's got an update on Jeremy Williams. I do, Ken. I'm told that he has been downgraded to out for the game. He did. He hurt that right knee just a few plays ago. Figaro on first down. Looking long down the left side. Well covered. Picked off at the 45-yard line. Wow, what a pick by Ja... Take that back. Pick by Trenton Trosclair. We do have a flag that was thrown. Holding offense, number 74. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is an interception. First down. Third turnover of the second half by Nichols who did not commit a turnover in the first half, and that'll kill you. Yeah, this ball is just thrown in the wrong spot. Threw it to the inside. The other thing that you, you need to do is give your defense a little time to catch their breath. They've been on the field in a track meet with the Southeastern offense, and now they're back out there again. 
unfortunate. With good field position at the 45-yard line of position. Nichols. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Barnett, handoff to Sutton. Sutton looking. Finding a little bit of room. Right now, Southeastern would be very content with running out the clock. A victory tonight, if the Lions would hold on and do so, would mean that they have the Southland Conference title all Soul to possession. themselves. Sole possession. They've already wrapped up the FCS playoff berth. They know they've got a bye in the first round of the playoffs. And J.R. Teagues, the athletics director, told us they'll do everything possible to bid and get as many playoff games here as they think possible. Barnett, right side run, spins away from a tackler. What a move before being tripped up at the 25-yard line. What a play by Jordan Barnett, an 18-yard gain, and that's exactly why Coach Ron Roberts told us this young man, if he wasn't playing behind Brian Bennett from Oregon, could start at any other school in the in the conference. No doubt. You look at this physical ability here, spin move, good strong run. I've talked about his, his cannon for an arm. You're right, he could probably start for just about any other team. Two rushes for 38 yards for Barnett. He's got that big frame, 6'3", and 205 pounds, athletic pounds on it. Give to Cody Sutton, escapes the lasso tackle, then is stood up and pushed out of bounds by the Colonel's B.T. Sanders, who had some help. You're starting to see it, that defense on, uh, of the Colonel's seems to be getting fatigued. We talked about this earlier. They've got so many players that Southeastern runs in and out, both offensively and defensively. Late in the second half, that's when you start to notice that the fatigue sets in on the opposing team, and, and Southeastern takes advantage of it. If you play your full too deep, you're going to play 22 players, and Southeastern on both sides of the football expects to play anywhere between 25 and 29, maybe 25 and 30 players. Barnett with the late throw, a catch, and a run inside the five-yard line by Jeremy Myers. 16-yard gain. There's almost nothing these lines can't do. Wise move here also by Ron Roberts to give Barnett some playing time as he has throughout the year and make sure he's ready if needed in the playoffs. Cody Sutton hits right into the middle of the line inside the five down to about the three-yard line. Okay, you're absolutely correct on that. This offense that you see running with Southeastern where they're exposing their quarterbacks on the run, you know, you're one play from coming into the game. So you definitely want to have uh, your backup quarterback uh, comfortable enough and knock the rust off, so to speak, so he can run the offense efficiently. I said something that was Harrell, pardon me. Uh, uh, Roberson, pardon me. Here's the give. Roberson again. He'll scoot to the outside, and with second effort, he's into the end zone. Touchdown. 51-20. to 20. The Lions have just about put the icing on the cake. You could make a movie, a full-length movie, out of what the Southeastern Lions football coaching staff does at halftime, the adjustments they make, the talk they give, and it would probably be a must-watch movie, a television series that would rank high in the Nielsen ratings, and a book that would be in the top five. They inspire them, apparently. Sebastian makes it look easy, as he always does, 52-20. to 20. Southeastern with the lead, 10 minutes and 50 seconds to play. And look at it again. Disney side. Ba, 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 and the best place to show it is Disney Parks. So come to the place where the entire family can laugh, let loose, and play together. Disney Parks. Come on, show your Disney side. 
was the lady named Judy who walked out the door with a wicked Christmas list that fell down to the floor. A Microsoft Surface tablet? With Office 2? A 2-in-1 Sony Vio Tap 11 PC? For Lou. A powerful LG G2 smartphone. That's some hot tech talk. Now her nieces and nephews have holiday treasure. They'll be like, yo, Aunt Jids, you're like the best auntie ever. Great gifts like the LG G2 in your ultimate holiday showroom. Best Buy. AT&T presents Be The Fan. Enter the sweepstakes every week by tackling my challenge. Hashtag your entry, Be The Fan, on Twitter, Instagram, or Vine for your opportunity to win a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Now go make me proud. Millions of guys dream of being a guitar legend, but not many become one. Fewer get there without playing a guitar. I'm Justin Nordic Thunder Howard, and I'm one of a kind. It up with a three yard rush by Xavier Roberson, right there, number one. And the Lions have opened up a commanding 32 point lead over the Nichols Colonels all in the second half. And that just explains how valuable this coaching staff and Ron Roberts is to this program. As the Lions get set to kick it deep. Fortson will watch it bounce in the end zone, will not return. And let's go downstairs to Aaron Cofill for a little bit more on the amazing head football coach of the Lions. Yes, Ken, earlier this week, the final 20-person ballot was released for this year's Eddie Robinson Award, which is the award that goes to the top coach in the FCS. Now, there are two Southland Conference coaches on that list. One of them is Southeastern's Ron Roberts, the other, McNeese State's Matt Viator. The award will be, an, or the winner will be announced on December the 16th at a ceremony in Philadelphia. Thanks, Aaron. And when you think of the job that this man has done, he was at Delta State, always in the playoffs there, trips to the uh, national championship game at Delta State here on first down. And, and we've got a new quarterback in. Bo Bear throws, and it's complete. And a drop. Scramble for it. Who's got it? So we're seeing Bo Bear come into the game. 6'4", 215, the junior from Atlanta. Went to Greater Atlanta Christian School. Get back to Ron Roberts in just a moment. Talk a little bit about Bo. Everybody knows him as the brother of T-Bob at LSU, mm -hmm. the son of Bobby Hebert. Excellent passer. He took a shot as he released that one, Ken. He has taken shots all year. In the season opener at Oregon, Nickel State at one point just trying to run some clock late in the game, and Hebert's bow is sliding out of bounds. And uh, Oregon defender just took a real cheap shot at him. And uh, that was injury number one on the season, and it just piled up from there. Michael Henry running up the middle. Good to see Bo in there, though. Bo from Atlanta Christian, when he came to Nickel State, came as not only a good football player, but a good basketball player, and said he liked basketball probably a little bit more than football. <laughs> and uh, I remember asking him, why don't you play basketball? And he said, last name's Bear, son of Bobby. You don't come to South Louisiana as an Bear to only play basketball. You come to play football. And Bo Bear has been a quarterback at Nichols ever since. Good basketball player, though. Won a three-point shooting contest in Tennessee. Here's Henry. Michael Henry breaks a tackle. Scurries down inside the 40, inside the 35-yard line of Southeastern with nine minutes and 12 seconds left. Of the two quarterbacks, Toscani Figaro and Bo Hebert, both the much better passer. He does a good job here. He gets the ball even though he was stepping on his back, off his back foot. Nice job by Henry, though. Grabbed the ball a little bit high, but turned it up field. Got to be impressed with what that young man has done this season. 36-yard gain. And Michael Henry's had a career night. Without a doubt. A great, a great year here. Henry gets the call again. Straight ahead to the 30-yard line for a short game. 
Bo's only drawback as a quarterback, a little bit limited as a runner, and he's just taken a beating this year from the opponents, going back to that season opener and then carrying through. He's been dicked and, and dinged uh, the whole season. And you know, it's one of those things when you get an injury, it's, it's hard to get it completely healed unless you get some significant time off. Henry rushing now at 90 yards. He's approaching the 100-yard mark. Hey, Bear, nobody back there protecting. Has some room to run if he wants it, but he'll throw. Has a man open and can't get it to Eric Buchanan. Threw it behind him. Buchanan had kind of run past it, or the ball just slipped away from Bo. By the way, he was B.O. when he was in Atlanta, but B-E-A-U-X <laughs> once he came to South Louisiana. It's funny how names change from time to time. You know, it's interesting. His dad, Bobby, played at South Lafourche and led him to a state championship there, but nobody, no, nobody offered him a scholarship except Northwestern State, Natchitoches. So he went there, had four good years with A.L. Williams, who, of course, had developed Joe Ferguson as a high school coach in Shreveport. And Joe Ferguson came down and, and tutored and helped Bobby Bear as a quarterback there at Northwestern State. Bo on the move, Bo with the man, hit, dropped. Dropped at the 14-yard line, and there's a penalty flag thrown. Xavier Marcus really hit hard. Yeah, I don't know how much of a drop that was as he's being forced by the uh, defensive back 24. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is fourth down. Yeah, Josh Dakin, number 24, passed a good lick on the wide receiver. So we're watching replay here. Bo doesn't get a tremendous amount of velocity on it, but just it was just good timing by the defensive back. Brings up fourth down and eight. And the Colonels want to talk about this. So Bo A. Bear and Charlie Stubbs, who is his own offensive coordinator, talk about this one a little bit. Charlie Stubbs. Offensive coordinator at Alabama, Tulsa, Oregon State, Louisville. He knows football. Wrote a book on it, too. A couple of books on it, on offensive football. Has some championship rings. And uh, those championship rings, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. Funniest one is from Alabama when he came here. <laughs> Did you know that WHNO TV 20 has more local sports programming than any station in the New Orleans area? Get your fill of everything from the Saints to college to prep. Every weekday beginning at 5, the most local sports coverage right here on WHNO TV 20. Charlie came down here and people knew that he had been on an Alabama SEC championship team. And they were looking for the ring because he had a BYU ring on and a ring from another school. And they said, where's that Alabama ring? And he says, hey, man. I'm here in South Louisiana. I'm not wearing any championship ring that's got red in it in LSU territory unless it's got nickels red and an N through it. That's it. It's a wise man. Wise it's man. He wise says, man. i got a recruit here, man. I know what, what goes and what doesn't go. It doesn't Stubbs has taken a unique approach to building this Nickel State football program. We'll chat about that in just a moment. Here's your fourth down eight to keep the chains moving. Bo Bear with play action being flushed out of the pocket. He'll stop, throw into the end zone, picked off, being returned. Here it comes. Harlan Miller with the interception and return back for 30 yards for Southeastern. Boy, for just a moment, as you looked at that play unfold, it looked like A Bear had a man wide open and Harlan Miller read it too, closed. And picked it off. Well, hopefully we get to see the replay here and see exactly if he threw it back across his body, which is one of the cardinal sins for a quarterback. And once we got to see where we, uh, where the penalties unfold, how this develops. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number two of the offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, it was Eric Buchanan with the unsportsmanlike third interception for the Lions who now have 16 interceptions on the year as a team. 
Might have floated it just a little, a little up there. Huh? Yeah, from watching that that replay, uh, Bo kind of stepped back to his right and didn't get a lot of. He wasn't able to plant his foot actually and get some drive on that ball and just it just hung up there. So we'll see more of Jordan Barnett at quarterback. Handoff, Darius Kai straight up the middle. Not easy to build a program the way Charlie Stubbs has been asked to do it and the way he's trying to do it after a nine-yard gain by Darius Guy, the sophomore from Tunica, Mississippi. He's trying to do it with high school players from around Louisiana and has 69 Louisiana players on his team after his four years of recruiting there. Toss out to the right side, caught by Kendrick Peoples, his first catch of the game. And you go back again to two deep plus a few more offensively and defensively are going to play for this very, very strong Southeastern team. Once they got their rhythm, this Southeastern offense just just put the throttle to the floor and just has not looked back since the start of the second half. Uh, it's amazing how, how many yards they've, they've accumulated and more importantly, how quickly they put points on the board. You're looking at two number one teams here tonight. I'll tell you where Nichols is number one in the conference in just a moment. Here's Darius Guy picking and choosing a hole on the right side and pushing a rugby, rugby scrum forward to about the 31-yard line. When Charlie Stubbs took over the Nichols program, they were dead last academically in the Southland Conference. And now they are number one in the Southland Conference academically and in graduation rate, something he takes a lot of pride in, Coach Stubbs. Well, he told us that was a high priority for him when he came in. And you, you mentioned it. He's building a, a program through local talent, through the high schools, very few transfers coming in from junior colleges. Hey, good uh, look at Harlan Miller there on the sideline who had made that last interception. Darius Guy with a right-end run again, but getting back to Charlie, Darius yes. It's yeah. not easy to build, and it takes time exactly. to build a program when 75% of your players are going to be recruited out of high school and have to have a pretty good grade point to get in. He is up to standard. Charlie Stubbs is up to standard there. It definitely is. That's a very important uh, statistic you mentioned that they're number one in academics. Uh, what a turnaround. And uh, you got to take your hat off, uh, to Coach Stubbs. And on this side of the football, Jordan Barnett at quarterback. Nothing fancy. He's just handing off. Lions killing some time. They've got this one safely put to bed. They want the trophy presentations to get here more quickly than the clock can tick off on the scoreboard. Barnett, do you think a, a quarterback as good as Jordan Barnett with the talent he has to be backing up Brian Bennett? And I'd say Coach Ron Roberts and this football team is loaded with the depth, with the talent, with the coaching ability, this is a team that could go all the way, as Chris Berman would say. Well, one of the biggest things that uh, Coach Robert was telling us early on. And here's a catch by Peoples. Again, his second catch of the night. Ten receivers have caught passes for Southeastern. And we have had five running backs touch the football. Four run the football in one catch a pass out of the backfield. It goes back to what you were just talking about, the depth of this team uh, across the board. Barnett, nothing fancy. Darius Guy, big hole. And he is tripped up and stopped by B.T. Sanders. And once again, a little uh, extracurricular it is a rival game. And I said it earlier on, I, I think at this point of the game, that frustration is setting in on, on the Nichols defense. They've been out there a long time. They've had a lot of points scored on them. And the, the frustration is starting to show. Jeremy Atwell told us of his starting 11, five are missing due to injury, including key ones like Segan Virginal, the guy who was the leader. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 90 of the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Eric Trench. But you're missing Segan Virginal. You're missing Davin Bovey with 78 tackles and is still at this time. He hadn't played for the last four games, and he's still tied for the lead this week in tackles. That's how important he was back there. T.J. Lumore is out with a neck injury. 
Nick LeBlanc is a linebacker, never started the season. He was lost in the preseason, and Ryan Bruno's out with a foot. All key players on the defense, all gone by injury. Darius Guy, Darius Guy on, the on the rush again. Down to the four-yard line. Let's make it the five-yard line. Eight rushes now, 59 yards for Darius Guy. You know, coming into this game with Nichols, the number of injuries that they had, it probably would have been easier to name who was still healthy instead of who was injured. <laughs> when this line team gets into the playoffs, an opponent is not going to beat them with 11 or 12 guys who can play or 15 guys who can play. You're going to have to keep fresh legs and fresh bodies, incomplete right side pass, knocked down, almost picked off. Nice play by... Brian Lewis of the Colonel defense, but well you're not going to beat him with, with 14 or 15 guys who can play football. You better have 20. You better have a two deep. You better have 22 and maybe 25. Without a doubt. And we, we saw that this evening. They, they've just constantly run in different uh, sets in multiple people staying fresh all the way to the end of the game. Third down five for Southeastern Barnett to Guy. Up the middle, fumbles the football. Picked up in the end zone. Curl's going to return. And that's B.T. Sanders. Think for a moment, a lot of players thought it might have been a touchback back there. Well, they thought it might have crossed the goal line before the ball came out, so we'll have to see what the replay shows. Hey, those that. defensive backs can pick up things or make interceptions <laughs> in the end zone, and good things happen. Now, we're going to show you a play of the guy doing the analyst role today, Gary Barbaro. This is what got him or helped get him into the Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame class of 2013. A 102-yard return. Here he goes. He's picking up speed. This is in slow motion. That's why it's taking so long, right? No, that's actually fast speed. <laughs> they speeded it up for me. Oh, Gary Barbaro. Nice role, man. And congratulations on being inducted into the Kansas City Chiefs Hall of Fame. Thank you. Quite an honor. I, I tell you what. This I can't year, class of 2013. was an honor, and it's hard to uh, express how, how well they treated us when we went up there on the uh, 28th and 29th of September for the induction. There's the Darius guy fumble into the end zone and the pickup and a run back by P.T. Sanders. Second turnover by the Lions. Boe Bear will toss it. And this is to C.J. Opalabi, a freshman from St. Michael. Charlie Stubbs, if he can stay healthy with his football team, is going to have one good football team at Nichols next year. Got to remember this, too. What hurts this Nichols team, they have to go back to the smallest budget in the Southland Conference of all the teams with football mm -hmm. that have budgets, he's got to play three money games, three games against big, big FBS powers, football bowl subdivision powers. Here's the toss from Boe Bear to Xavier Marcus. Most other schools, matter of fact, every other school in the Southland only plays two. Next year, it won't get any easier for him because he's got Arkansas, North Texas, and Air Force. This year, he had Oregon. Western Michigan, which they went out and won, upset them, and UL Lafayette. And don't think UL Lafayette was an easy team. No, I was actually at that game, and that uh, that was a very physical game by USL, uh, ULL. We got some good teams in the state of Louisiana, and UL Lafayette might be the second best. Arguably, some people might say the best. Good catch and throw. And that one goes to Hayden Cortis, the big tight end. Yeah, both stood in there. Good delivery, good set, good poise. Showed good arm strength there. 14-yard gain by Bo Hebert. By the way, Bo is a junior, so he comes back. Toscani Figaro, a sophomore, will be a junior next year. And Kalen Henderson, the starter from East St. John, who was the transfer from Tulsa, he'll be a senior next year. So... This is a football team that will be loaded next year. Bo Bear on the throw. Catch, or caught rather, by Josh Hanbury. 
Glad to see him back in action. He had that concussion in the Sam Houston game. Missed the Central Arkansas game last week. And this young junior from John Curtis. Back and healthy, and that is good. Josh Hanbury, 5'7", 160. 15-yard reception. Bo Bear looking for Hanbury again. Whoa, he's hit hard. Now, you know, I know that the targeting rule has to do with helmet to helmet, but the rule is, is supposed to be to protect the defenseless receiver. And to me, that's a rule right there. That, that's a hit. You want to see it, but that's a defenseless receiver. And I'd rather see the ejection from the game taken out of that targeting rule and uh, the rule extended to cover hits on receivers and backs like that. Well, safety is paramount uh, around all uh, aspects of the uh, of professional of football. So, you know, anything you do to protect the players, you, you need to really do that. Second down and 10. And complete there. You know, on that particular play just now, uh, Bo was a little high on that pass. This copyrighted telecast of Southland Conference football may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the Southland Conference and WHNO TV. A bear 5 of 10, 73 yards in that one interception. Bo scrambling. He will throw long. He's got a man out there. Buchanan pulls it in at the 10-yard line. So as we approach the one-minute mark in this game, Bo completes the big one to Eric Buchanan. And the Colonels would like to put one more on the board before this one comes to an end, a 32-yard game. Uh, he's exercised good, good patience and vision, keeping, the, keeping his vision down the field, finding the open receiver. Why his dad, what a career he had with the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons to close that career out. Bo on the scramble. And he's got a man caught by Reggie nice Wilson. Play. Touchdown. Good decision making by Bo Bear on that. And the Colonels will put one on the board in the final minute of this game. Yeah, Bo Bear made that play happen. Uh, he extended it with his feet, kept pushing to the sideline, allowed his receiver to turn upfield made an outstanding one-hand grab. Bo now 7 of 12 for 116 yards. The touchdown and, of course, the pick earlier. Dolan with the point after. And we've got a 52 to 27 football game. And the Colonels, again, all year have been able to put points up. But when they do put some points up, they have trouble stopping an opponent. And when they have stopped an opponent, the offense has failed to put points up as witnessed last week in the 17-10 loss to Central Arkansas. It's the catch-22. Yeah, we're watching an outstanding uh, job by Bo extending the play to the sideline and, again, allowing the receiver to turn up field. But a what great one-handed grab there. Wow. Talk about concentration. Then he took a, a, a hard lick. An eight-play, 83-yard drive, two minutes and 47 seconds, ending in that 11-yard pass to another sophomore. Reggie Wilson. The big thing for Charlie Stubbs is just to not get some of these talented players hurt in those three early money games. The, the games against next year, Arkansas at Arkansas at North Texas State. North Texas is going to be strong next year. This was their reloading, rebuilding year. Right. They were pretty good this year. Mm -hmm. Next year, they're going to be Dynamite and Air Force. Well, you know, you, you look at, at a team, and you know you're going to have injuries that are going to happen during the course of the year. That's just part of the, the game. But the number of severe injuries that happened to Nichols just seemed so out of proportion. They were this year. Unbelievable. Just straight, offensively and defensively. Well, wouldn't it have been nice to see Marcus Washington and Dalton Hilliard Jr. run the football tonight? We'll have a return by Southeastern. Harlan Miller on the return. Harlan Miller on the return. And the Lions will have it for the final 43 seconds. Don't forget, after this game, 
We will have the trophy presentations. We'll stay here and get the trophy presentations first of the Riverbell Classic. And then Southland Conference Commissioner Tom Burnett will present the undisputed, because it doesn't matter what <laughs> happens in Lake Charles on Saturday. It's going to be an undisputed and undefeated Southland Conference champion, the Southeastern Lions and Coach Ron Roberts. How special can that be? That's well deserved. They obviously they've earned that that uh, that trophy, and uh, you got to take your hat off to them. Kudos to them. Tremendous job by that uh, that team. And and again, in only two years. Something special. Third quarterback being used by the Lions to hand it off in these final plays. Justin Postuma, the 6'1", 200-pound junior from Pasadena, California. And he'll do the one handoff, and that'll be it. The Lions to a standing ovation by their fans here at Strawberry Stadium. Defeat the Colonels 52-27. to Southeastern finishes perfect in Southland Conference play. 7-0, and 10-2 on the year. How's that for year number two with the Ron Roberts era? The Colonels will fall to 4-8, and 1-6 in conference play. Southeastern tonight, 702 yards on 81 plays. How's that for offense? And what a second half. Most of it came in the second half. It did. Southeastern scored on six of eight drives in the second half. 411 yards in the second half alone. My goodness. That, that's, it's, it. And we will take a break and come back with the trophy presentations for the Southland Conference champions, Southeastern Lions. <laughs> 